Computer! Yay. It's recording! So exciting. Hi! Hello! Hi, guys. Morning. Morning. Hi, Julie. Hi, Spender. Meeting number five. Morning, all. Oh, hi, Kelly. So, so in morning, Australia... Afternoon and evening. <laughs> in Australia, it's Monday morning, right? Yep. Yes, sure is. is. Fairly, Fairly early, early Monday, Monday morning. First coffee of the day. <laughs> it's, next week, month, right? it's, it's next month in Australia. <laughs> next <laughs> month. That's oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Anika. Okay. I love familiar faces. Hey, Bo, you're still standing or sitting? You, you I'm, still okay. Okay. I'm here. My God, how do you keep going, man? What's your secret? <laughs> it's it's the progress that everyone's making in the graph. Oh my goodness, uh -huh. it's exciting. Matt McKinley, you've yes. gone all corporate. You've had a haircut. <laughs> that's right well you'd hardly say that's corporate for rome it's probably the, the opposite right i've got to, I've got to grow my hair longer mm. <laughs> we need someone that can actually like yeah look professional right <laughs> someone on the team yeah um no no it's about you it's been a long time so um yeah i thought i'd kind of get get it done <laughs> i'm wearing a three-piece suit sorry you can't see me <laughs> Appreciate it, Rick. <laughs> Rick, okay. one of these times you got to show your face. It's so not fair that you are constantly showing some airplane guy, but we have no idea what you look like. Every single, even in the reading room. What's yeah. up, dude? Well, oh, she's calling you out. I know. I second that. I, that is I, a I, that is a very cool airplane, though. I'm mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, the Katie did. Uh, yeah, I kind of adopted that as my uh, my avatar, I guess. You know, I, I like the idea that it's more about the idea of flight than flight itself. You know, nice. like that's so meta. All these wings, this big contraption of his own making, with its feet stuck in the sand. You know, that's me. <laughs> But yeah, I never have time to do my uh, hair and makeup, you know. So, yeah, we'll early morning. <laughs> Samantha, okay. you'll be horrified at how old I am. You don't sound all. You sound wise, but not old. Ooh, well played. <laughs> oh, very nice. Very wise, nice. Wise, but not old. <laughs> Wisened. I think I think Mark hit it on the head right there. <laughs> wiseified. <laughs> I've been wiseified. Okay, people still streaming in, but let's get to it and um, get underway. Quick uh, sync with everyone just to catch up before we go into the breakout rooms this week. Welcome, nice to see you all. Nice to see the familiar faces back, and as always, great to um, get in and uh, for another session and through the books. So, uh, quick sync with Bo and Matt. Um, Let's start with, what do you think? Let's go with Matt first. Ah! <laughs> um, Matt, um, quick sync, how's it been going? It's been going really well. I um, just want to share a quick story. I was reading about a topic that came up in the last book club, which is the topic of long running book clubs around the world. And I was reading about this one book club that's been going in Melbourne, Australia for almost a hundred years. Yes, says Kate. Oh. <laughs> and the thing that caught my attention, I thought was, was kind of interesting because um, the, back in the records that they have from way back in like 1920, when they started this book club, one of the things that they noted in their record keeping was on a particular night, the papers that people read were amazing and it made me realize that part of their secret was that they were writing i mean it doesn't have to be like an academic paper it could be like a little thing that they scribbled in a notebook like we're all doing but the basic idea is that their winning ingredient was that they weren't just reading books they were also writing about them and they were sharing what they wrote with each other it just was like this light bulb for me. I was like, oh yeah, yeah, we can do that too. We can last for a hundred years. We've got the secret ingredient because I think it is important and it distinguishes us from other book clubs. And uh, yeah, it was kind of fun 
to, to read about that. That's great. Yeah. Um, Kate, did you know about that one too from Australia, obviously? I did know about uh, the long running book club in Australia. Yeah. And yeah. I was chatting to some folks yesterday about the fact that the reading culture was very big in Australia during colonial times. So I think it kind of built to that in the 20s. Yeah. Yeah, that's excellent. And I also know, you know, just anecdotally off the top of my head, the Linnean Society was where um, they used to meet on Wednesday nights, I think, in London, near Piccadilly Circus. And one night, um, uh, Charles Darwin and Alfred Foster Wallace both sent in manuscripts because they couldn't attend, but they were both sent in on the same night, the theory of um, natural selection. So Alfred just, Russell Wallace, Matthew. Uh, yeah, sorry, sorry, Nico. <laughs> and it's the Linnaean Society. Linnaean, right, there you go. Um, <laughs> and they also had someone in the room who would um, correct mistakes as well, <laughs> I think. So that was handy. Um, Some yeah. pedantic Englishman, probably. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so, so, yeah, I like the idea of a, like a, a group that catches up and uh, shares ideas. It seems like a bedrock idea to um, great ideas themselves. So uh, excellent example, Matt. Um, um, what else? What else excites you? What's going on um, more generally? Uh, so more, more generally, uh, I, I think we're reaching a really interesting point because we're we're near the end of our book. We're in the last section. So Coyle writes about high performing cultures, and he talks about safety and vulnerability, and then purpose. And uh, now that we're nearly at the end, I think it's we're reaching a point where there are some really interesting resonances between the book and our own group dynamic. And I think it's really kind of fun seeing how these ideas that we're reading about actually literally apply to us right now and sort of taking those ideas and thinking about them and passing them back and forth in our discussions uh, and just sort of thinking about so how can we use this book to strengthen ourselves as a community and it's it, it's interesting because it's, it's a little bit challenging you know it's not just exciting ideas that that are gonna you know rev us up and 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 uh sort of give us some extra stuff to think about during the week uh in in, in my case as i think about this stuff it kind of puts me on the spot i mean i have to ask myself am i living up to all these these things that sort of coil is putting out there and it's uh, i guess you both are comfortable and wonderful you are. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for the support yeah. Woo um, so, yeah, I mean, that's where we're at. I feel like the the end is in sight. We've got just one more meeting after this one to sort of wrap up the book itself. And yeah. so what I'm seeing is that all this beautiful stuff that we've been prototyping, we can sort of work with it a little. It's like yeah. all the paint is on the canvas and we can adjust stuff now, which is kind yeah. of an exciting stage to be at. Um, but yeah, I mean, the end is in sight. We got another couple of weeks to go. I feel so thrilled by what we've already done. And at the same time, I'm just thinking, you know, there's, there's a lot that can happen in, in the next two weeks with what we've got. So yeah, yeah it's fun. It's fun. Oh, oh, well, that's great. It feels like, you know, through the looking class a bit with the, uh, actual <laughs> exploring group dynamics and group performance, um, as a book, as well as, as a group, which is uh, excellent. So well done to everyone who's, um, making it through the, the book and, um, the, the graph looks amazing. So um, excellent work uh, to you all. I'll, I'll quickly go over to Bo um, before we jump into the um, breakout rooms. I would start with, um, what are you excited about, Bo? But that pretty much means anything all the time, right? If it's Bo. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so let's, uh, let's hit them off with a little background. So before we open the meeting, right, um, we had a little breathing exercise and it just, we just breathed in together for five seconds and then we breathed out together for five seconds. We did that three times. And, it, and just between the organizers, it really synced us. And I almost feel like if there was an, am I yelling by the way? I've got the microphone here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Stop yelling, Bo. Um, uh, and I feel like that is like a complete representation of what's going on with the Sonke group right now. It's like, we're all breathing in together and we're all breathing out together and we're synced in this way that's you know, Connor had mentioned something about, you know, what we're doing is like the real Rome cult. And, and, I, and I feel like that, that's what we're doing. It's like there's this, this culture that's, that's sort of bubbling up right now. And, and I mean, from the Rome reading rooms to, the, to these meetings, I mean, even what Bart was saying in the chat, it's like, you know, I feel like what, what's happening right now is, is something special. And I don't think it's like a, it, it's not like a begin and ending kind of thing. I really feel like there's, 
um, it, it's continuous. Like this is the journey that we're all on. And the amount of learning that everyone is doing from each other is phenomenal. And I think there was a moment where um, someone was reading someone else's note and it was just like, oh my God, I was just thinking about this note. I think it was, uh, I think it was Rick Krause and uh, 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 Glenn, if I'm not mistaken, but it was just like, that's what it is. And that reminds me of when for Rome Book Club One, I remember, uh, I believe it was Maggie Delano and I was reading one of her notes and it just sort of like springboarded me to this other idea about fractal theory. And it's just, that's what this is about. It's just, you know, note taking tool, sure. But what's the tail end of that networked thought? And I, I really just feel like everyone that's here and everyone that's showed up, you know, RBC one, RBC two, RBC three, RBC 10, you know what I mean? It's we're doing something that's, it's special. And I, and I really want to emphasize that it's not one person. It's not, you know what I mean? It's not the organizers. No, it's everyone that's showing up every week that's participating and writing into these shared graphs and opening up and being vulnerable and, and, you know, sharing your, the most, like there's, I, I was talking about this in one of the videos where it's like, there's not, there's nothing more like scary than allowing someone to enter the only place where no one is physically allowed to enter. And that's our minds. And every time we write in a shared graph, what we're doing, I'm getting chills by the way, but every time we write in a shared graph, that's what we're doing. We're allowing others to enter in that, the one fortress where we don't let anyone else in. And it's just, I think that's something that can't be glossed over. It's, it's, that is what I think makes RBC so special is that we're all doing that. And as we're doing that, we're learning how to be better humans. And okay, I'll stop being like, I see everyone's stone cold faces. It's like, I should tell a joke. I know. I'm like, yeah. preach it, preach it. Man. This is, you know, it's, it's, if someone asks me why I'm, why I'm so passionate. It's like, come on, dude, like take yeah. a step back and see what we're actually doing. What we're doing is revolutionary. And it's like, yeah, so I'm in it. I'm in it. I feel yeah. like, Bo, I feel like a lot of us are getting little glimpses of this and gradually we're seeing more and more of how powerful this is. I mean, that's part of what's exciting about it, but it also might seem a little opaque to people on the outside who are all like, well, hold on, why are they getting so excited about this? And we're all like, because you haven't seen what we see each week when we read the graphs. I mean, this is a, kind of like a new form of communication. It's, it's, it's uh, I mean, the word has clearly been thrown around quite a lot in the context of Rome, but you know, it is, it does feel revolutionary uh and yeah it's it's exciting to be part of this process even though of course it it, it often feels risky and uh, uncertain yeah. but uh, it's part of the and fun that's why we're all here mindset. absolutely I, I totally agree with that and and Bo and matt you've taken it in directions that uh, distinctly you as well which has been um amazing so um yeah thanks and perhaps that's a good time to, to get into the actual rooms where you guys can get to the work of- um, Oh, wait, 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 one tiny thing. Uh, Bo, can you just lead us in a 15 second together breathe exercise? Let's just do that again. Like literally <laughs> everyone, just just do what you did with the three of us. Let's you ready? do it. Yeah. <laughs> Glad you asked. <laughs> okay, so there's something about connecting the, the brain, our minds with our hearts. And our, and our body. And I just feel like if we can get that connection, it's powerful. And, and if we can all sort of sync up with that together, it's like, I'm not a hippie, but there's like, there's waves, you know, that we can't, it's like auras, you know? And so what I'd like to do is I'd like to just guide everyone through three, shoot you train, three, um, three breaths. So let's just start with an inhale together. And an exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale.
might be C. Is that three? I think that was three. Three, yeah. yeah. Okay. We should add an, an extra one for each uh, new RBC. So by, <laughs> by, by 25, we're only just doing the breathing exercise. I love that, Bo. It's, it's really nice to sync and particularly on a Monday morning for me, a nice way to get back into the week. So um, um, let's get to it. Let's break out to the room. So um, Matt, what's the plan here? You've got a, a Zoom room uh, set yeah, up. That is right. Thanks to Nico, who is graciously sharing hosting. I'm going to put the zoom link right now in the chat so kindly uh hold up and slow down on using our chat for just a moment so that this link can stay here yep. and that is the link that's to for the coil group okay best of luck to the coil group hope you have a good yep. week nice to see you again and um see you next week yeah and bo what's the plan for um Sonka's group or your group well, I, I like I like having a little lobby just for people that are going to come into the meeting. Yeah. So so yeah. Uh, so everyone that's in the meeting right now for Sonke's group, let's go ahead and go uh, to the breakout room, the little four squares, and go to Sonke's auditorium, and then I'll meet everyone there. Okay, I'll I'll stay in the um the lobby, Bo, just to direct people. Yes. So uh, breakout rooms, Sonke's auditorium. Um, scroll down a little bit, hover over the number and then you can jump to the room. Great. Okay, best of luck everyone. Enjoy your week as well. Bye. Hey everyone. Bye. Bye. Hey everyone. Hi everyone. Hello. Hi everyone. We're actually pretty good on time. Look at that. I mean, the agenda kind of we're kind of flowing with an agenda here what i want to do for the first hour is just open it up i mean I, I just feel like there's been a lot of information that's been presented and a lot of breakthroughs a lot of you know points of clarity and i i really just want to open it up for group participation here um i i don't have the timer like that shows but just look for my face and i'll give you like 30, like this is 30 seconds left, right? And uh, we'll just limit it to like two minute shares and I'm just gonna open it up. Um, I, I don't really wanna pick on people, you know what I mean? If, if you just wanna unmute yourself and you just wanna talk about, you know, like the breakthroughs you've had, the struggles you've had and just check in with the group. I, I feel like, you know, we've been doing a lot of writing together and I think it's nice to just, there's something about vocalizing it that's powerful as well. And um, yeah, I'm just gonna leave it open-ended and we'll just do this for an hour. And um, yeah. Hey, Bo, can I, uh, can I get us started with a question? I'll, I'll, take already that, did. I'll, I'll take that as a yes. Yes, I already did. Um, hey, so I've, I've put my 12 permanent notes in, but now I can't find them. <laughs> I don't know how to find them. Maybe it's because I'm really tired, but I don't like, do I go to my name or maybe that gets a starter or maybe I'm just dumb, but. <laughs> Anyway, I didn't hear a word of that. Sorry, I was, it was, yeah. Oh, like Michael Barr is trying to find his permanent notes. Permanent notes or your fleeting note captures, Michael? Uh, okay, so first of all, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, oh, okay, I okay, you. okay. So I, I went into the, uh, the, the, the daily notes like we were instructed to do. And I dragged over the relevant notes, like that whole that whole thing from my capture page. I went through the instructions, filled all the fleeting notes, did the whole thing, went into the permanent page, put in my my, my hashtag, all that stuff, linked everything. But now I want to go back and kind of see a nice little page of all of the 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 all of the stuff that I've done. Uh, or maybe I'm not asking the right question. Or maybe it's a dumb question, and I'll just show you. Did you did you pull your notes over to the daily page? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I followed Bo's uh, instructions to the piece. Michael, I think that's that's the same thing. I had a question too. I'm actually wondering if Bo did this intentionally where we can't find our own notes. And okay. so it's the collective group. I don't know. That's where I'm asking Bo. <laughs> okay, it's not okay. Because I was trying to find like a bunch of everyone's because I used to like like looking at people's responses and entries and I couldn't find them in a collective location. So I'm guessing this was. If, if you really want to do that, what you can do is you can create um, or go into your captured page and then block reference the timestamp 
not the permanent note itself, but just the timestamp. And then that way you have a record. I'll show you. So basically, I'm gonna shift click this into the sidebar and then I'm just gonna say this one. So instead of sort of block referencing this, block reference just the timestamp. And then finished or something. Oops, sorry. And then that way you have a collection, if that makes sense. Okay, I, I suspect we'll we'll figure this out together as we as we proceed through today. Mm -hmm. I wonder if it'd be helpful. You just gave me an idea, Bo, because I had the same problem. Then maybe just put a little like beside the time that the, the uh, reference block put like a prompt for myself that says whatever it is that I ended up calling it. So like I called one of my teaching so I could put teachings so that I know which one of them go, which one it is. So I don't have to un, un, uh, I don't have to un expand all of them to figure out which one is which. My, my, my only thing is I want to, I want you to practice what you would do in your own graph. And if it's in your own graph, you don't need to do any of that. So, so that uh, it's just, yeah, practice, perfect practice. So you never leave prompts. You only have those timestamps. Yeah. Cause it's already in your Zettelkasten. You already like, it's already, why would you need to go back to what you were writing? And then if it's in the, if in the daily notes page, all you have to do is expand it and it's all there. Yeah. I guess I'm just thinking about like, when you're working on something else and you're like, oh, here's where, just more like what we're doing right now, where I just want to be able to go, here's the 10 things I wrote about that. And I put them over here, but a quick block reference. But if I had a little prompt, it would just quickly remind me what each of those was. So well, well the other curious. thing, it, the other thing that's going to do is clutter up the um, relevant notes section. Yeah. So that when you're looking down the line of your relevant notes, all the stuff is going to be off. So, so let me, again, I, I, I want to just focus on, instead of the technicalities of this, um, more along the lines, because as you progress, I think one of the biggest things that I wanted to focus on was, especially, so it, it almost feels like the first, like, two weeks was all about, you know, how can you learn how to write in Rome? And then it almost feels like, the last week has been like throwing you all into the water, into the ocean. And I'm just like swim. Right. And it's partly because I don't want like this idea that you have to have uh, uh, an answer from others, but to seek that answer from yourself. And it's, you know, and, and to instill that in everyone as well. It's not about Bo's ideas. No, it's not about that at all. It's questioning going, okay, well, what, how do I figure this out? And, and, and then asking yourself these questions in order to answer these questions for yourself and, and just really instilling that, but also allowing you to make the mistakes that are necessary. You know, it, it's, it's, there was a lot of difficulty, even for myself, you know, writing the first two or three or four permanent notes into the shared graph. Cause it was like, Oh, wow. You know, why is this feeling so weird? And, and I think everyone needed to experience that on their own, instead of saying, this is what you need to do. And so I also know that there's been a lot of people that have been messaging me and, 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 and everything like that in regards to like, I see something or I experience what it felt like to crystallize thought. Like, can we just talk about that as a group a little bit more in regards to, you know, what were the, what were the breakthroughs? What were the struggles, but you were able to overcome? What were the answers that you were, you were wrestling with, but then you were able to solve? I'll just share a cool thing that inside of sort. Um, you know, I think one of the concerns as a group for some of us has been like, well, some of us are reading the same books and how do we deal with um, paragraphs that each one of us are overlapping paragraphs. And just, um, it's been fascinating to see that I'm working on the same paragraph as someone else might be. And They've completed a permanent note on it already. Uh, and as I go through and I'm trying to figure out, okay, um, synthesizing what I've, what I know through my fleeting note summary and my literature note summary and looking at the permanent note, 
um, collection actually doing the work of like, okay, where actually does this fit in and how do I create the permanent note title in a way that contributes to the conversation? It's been fascinating to see that like, whoa, this paragraph can exist in so many different places and the con concept of it can exist in so many different places. And it's simply the title and it's even the title is abstracted from the other, other the way other people have, have written it. And it's just been fascinating to see that, that um, yeah, th that in action. It's one of the things that you can't teach also because the permanent note can literally live anywhere and it could say anything. And so it's like, how do you teach that? It's, there's an infinite amount of ways to place it and there's an infinite amount of ways to abstract it and add it to the Zettelkasten. And, all you and it, because it can fit anywhere, all you need to do is drag over a relevant note in order to connect them. And so, yeah. Okay. One of the, sorry, let me add one more thing and a challenge for me right now. So one of the other things, one of the things I'm challenged by right now is like, I'm realizing my fleeting notes have fleeting notes. As I extract stuff out, um, there's stuff that isn't quite pertinent to the like the level of depth I'm getting to is leading me to inquiries of different sorts. And I'm left with sort of these open-ended questions that I'm not answering because they're so tangential to to the note, the concept of the note. So I'm kind of left wondering what I do with those open-ended questions. How do I collect those? How do I start to research those? Think about those, ruminate on it, and then seek out the answers in other resources and other books and other other uh, reference materials. And then what happens is that's that sort of thinking and talking with your Zettelkasten. Again, it's a little bit different with a shared Zettelkasten, but it's still that idea of those ideas that are sort of popping off in the fleeting notes. What happens is it's going to make you seek. It's almost like the reticular activating systems, you know, in, in where it's like, what, you know, you're not, you're not thinking about a Tesla until you're ready to go buy a Tesla. And then all of a sudden you see a Tesla everywhere. You know, it's that same sort of idea. It's like, you haven't been thinking about it, but after abstracting that out, yes, they're open-ended questions, but now you're also thinking about it. And so the books that you pick up and the things that sort of highlight towards you is, is what you're drawn towards. And then the answers, if, if that makes sense, maybe it's too metaphysical, but it's, it's that idea of when we start paying attention and noticing those things is when we start seeing the answers and we start seeking those answers. I, I was loving coming in three days late and, um, uh, and, and all of a sudden seeing what you were talking about when you first showed us and said, imagine this when there's like a couple dozen entries and all of a sudden it was really easy. I, I, I totally got the hashtag, um, the, the purpose of why it's one or two words at most. So powerful. And then, oh, it's like, oh, okay. My idea, my permanent note can fit in here really well. Oh, so exactly. Embedding ideas within all of your different oh, so things. It was so cool. Thank you. In response to uh, Alan, somewhat, um, I, <clears throat> I had um, a similar thought, similar problem, whatever. And I thought, uh, going back to something Bo said about uh, additional index pages um, for certain topics and um, maybe a, a page of open questions with tags that might be, you know, you might be able to loosely relate certain questions to others, but, you know, just uh, have, have like an open question page where you could throw those things for, you know, review at some later time, you know, just periodically look through them and you don't lose them. Um, I mean, I'm doing something similar to that. I think all, all, all I'm doing is all I'm guiding you towards is just a, the simplest, simplest lightweight structure. And that complexity that you're talking about right now is when you get to that point, because this is so simple, when you, when you, when you get to that point of complexity, guess what? You can solve it. You can figure it out because you have the lightweight structure there. 
And so it's like, oh, well, I'll just make a page and I'll just have all my questions there where I can just live. And, and I think that's, it's, it's really emphasizing the simplicity of this is all I'm getting you toward, guiding you towards. But then it's as you need more, as you need to solve those problems, you have the confidence to solve those problems. That's what Sonke kept on telling me. He was like, listen, it's, it's like, keep it as simple as possible because the complexity is going to come. And when it does come, Rome just has the capacity to solve those problems. Hi, Bo. I have a question. Sometimes I, I'm writing and I feel that this, the, that fleeting notes and the literature notes can, can result in more than one permanent notes. Do you suggest that we replicate all this structure or uh, is, have some way to put two permanent notes for something that we are reading? You know, there was one video where I showed off where you can literally put a permanent note anywhere. And you could actually do three permanent notes from that one fleeting and literature note. And you can, it's just going to weaken this formidable dialogue partner. And so what I usually suggest is, I mean, again, it's, it's when you get to that point where you trust in your dialogue partner and you don't need to do all that, guess what? Once you know the rules, you can break the rules. I know that Lumen at times didn't even do literature notes. He didn't even abstract all that. He was like, I have an idea. I'm just going to add it to the Zettelkasten. Guess what? You can do that. And, and when you get to that point, you can figure it out. It's, I just wanted to lay out the most basic structure. And I wanted to make sure that it was as formidable for you as possible until you get to that point where you hit that critical mass of your own notes. And then you're like, I get it. I can trust in this. And so, and also it's, if you have this idea and, you, and you're like, oh, you know what? I think this could be more than, more, more than one permanent note. Just have that one and then go seek out another one to support that argument. Maybe in a different resource, maybe in a different reference. I, I did that. I actually did that this morning. I created, I saw two items in the permanent notes in the, in the thread that I was adding to. And I, I just, add, I wasn't sure. Uh, I figured, Hey, this is pretty open and flexible. So I just put things in italics and said placeholder, but I already put the hashtag in there. Cause I was like thinking, okay, this is exactly where I want to see a permanent note or, or sorry, this is exactly where I want to take this idea. So uh, you just answered the question. That's really cool. Um, I just actually caught up with all last week and I added one permanent note. Um, <laughs> but uh, while I was, I was, I was so overwhelmed looking at all the permanent notes. Um, but finally I found a place for my notes. And my question is, I don't know if anyone uh, had the same problem or maybe this is a stupid question. Um, how do we deal if my, the thumbnail for the note that I'm for my permanent note is already there like the thumbnail itself, of course, the, 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 the description is different, but like, if I think about it as, if I give it a thumbnail that already exists, how do we deal with this? Of course, I could also come up with another thumbnail, but what if I think this is the best thumbnail for this, but it's already there. Um, should I just say like, I don't know, serendipity too, or, you know, just how to deal with it? Well, I, I'd say, if it fits there and it has the, if you already have serendipity at another location and on a completely different thread of conversation, you want to add another serendipity, then basically what you're doing is you're adding another linked reference, but it's a directly linked reference, if that makes sense. And it's great is because what happens is when you stumble upon serendipity, I think there was structure or purpose that was twice or something. And if you pull over both of them into linked references, where this new permanent node is, you have a branch all the way over here that's linked and you have a branch all the way over here that's linked. And then you don't know where that's gonna take you. And I think that's the beauty of it. Yeah, Bo, that's what I'm looking forward to. Is I think that last week you said we were gonna start talking about traversing through it now. Uh, and I'm anxious to see that. Uh, and like you were saying earlier, this system that you shared with us is fairly simple once we get it. And I was um, so tempted, I couldn't help it. I went to my private graph and I've already started, you know, 
I, the last week, really, I've been working in that more than anything, because I, you know, Rome has been pretty dormant for me since last December, just because I've tried so many methods, I just couldn't get it, you know, couldn't get it down, and, and, and because, like you were saying, how simple this is, I've been able to add to it the way I see fit on my private graph, but it was, it was because of this foundation here, so... The only piece that now is maybe missing is this tra traversing piece that can't wait to see that. Yes, and, and that's that that's the critical mass. That's where where yeah the notes are everywhere. You don't know where it's going to take you. You know, I was actually thinking about this as well. I almost feel like there's there's three different like phases that that if you think about it, right? And I'm calling it CPR, right? There's the capture phase. There's the processing phase. And then there's the retrieval phase, right? And it's like, it's sort of all smashed together, but it's like, first you capture, that's the fleeting notes with the reference notes. And then you process where you do fleeting to literature, and then you find the location in the permanent notes. And then a completely different sort of hat that you have to put on is when you're gonna sort of retrieve this information or traverse through the Zettelkasten. And so it's like three different, like, like times that you're interacting with the Zettelkasten, and if that makes sense. And we haven't, and we're just sort of edging on that last phase where it's like we're retrieving and we're traversing, if that makes sense. Yeah, I think um, uh, this week was kind of challenging for me um, specifically where I thought that there was information overload before and then now seeing people creating information on top of what we are already doing was, um, kind of like like drinking from the fire hose, which I guess is to be expected from what you were telling us. Um, but I think that it was like a lot of overwhelm in my brain where I just felt kind of flooded with like, we have all this that we need to uh, capture. We have all this we need to process. And then I'm already thinking one step ahead of being like, how am I going to like find all of this stuff and how I'm gonna retrieve it? So like, um, I think just the stress of those combined, I did actually find myself not breathing as much when I was going through our daily lesson. So I really appreciated the, the breathing exercise. Um, so I don't know if anyone else had a similar struggle. I actually, you know, like was talking about this online where it's like, I felt like my heart rate was jacked when I was trying to create my first permanent note. And I don't know why. Um, but um, asking around people were like, yeah, like um, it might be partially because it feels so permanent and it feels like unchangeable. So I'm still working through why I have that emotion when I'm writing permanent notes, but I um, was just curious to hear what everyone else kind of experienced. I think no matter what um, we're told or, you know, what the so rules or guidelines are, <laughs> um, but I think it's inevitable that, I mean, essentially what you're doing on a public graph, to a certain extent, you're performing, right? And you're showing other people your work. So, yeah, it's, it's an additional pressure. It's, it's um, I mean, frankly... You know, I didn't really have any interest whatsoever in doing a, a public or a, a group Zettelkasten. Um, but I'm seeing, you know, I'm seeing the value of going through this exercise. Gotcha. And I, can, I can see, ah, oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I, you know, I can see the value. Maybe you find some people, friends or colleagues with have simple, similar research interests or whatever. And I can see where it could be valuable. Um, but where it's more or less a free for all. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a different animal altogether. But I and I again, I think a permanent note, you know, what's permanent, nothing's permanent. If you need to tweak them, tweak them. Um, as fearlessly as possible, I guess, whatever makes the most sense. And um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I know, Bo, that you don't want to talk too much about technicalities, but I had a question in regard to kind of, you know, moving the system into my per per uh, personal graph and wondering um, if there's any advantage or need to use namespaces like we're doing on the public graph is, uh, or would that you just get rid of the namespace idea? You don't is need that, 
just, just, just have a captured page. Just as long right, as you right. have a captured page, that, that, and we're gonna walk, we're gonna work through that next week. But it's just having a captured page. That's okay. it. And then if yeah. you want to use namespaces, yeah. you can. That's what I figured. I just, yeah. I wasn't sure what the if if there is there any value to having namespaces in a personal graph. I mean, if you want to have just organization, there's no actually function that namespaces are, have been employed with 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 Rome. I mean, Connor's been talking about it for about a year now that, you know, we're going to, he's going to expand it. But at the moment, it's kind of like, it's just naming something. It's really what it is. I think Heather was going to say something. Kind of like attributes. No, sorry. Uh, <laughs> for for, for yeah, me, exactly. Rick, it, Rick, it's like, um, if, if I journal, if I'm journaling and I'm writing about someone, you know, that would be different than if I create a page for them for, you know, with metadata about them, for example. So I could have two Ricks, you know, one what I think of you in my journal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, right. Here, here's, so a, here's, a here's a question for you too. Here's a question. Here's a question for you too, Bart. It's, uh, how important is a permanent note? In a Zettel cast, and how important is a permanent note? And this is sort of piggybacking off what Nina was saying, you know, and then what Elon was, you know, struggling with is, well, it, it's the conversation partner, I feel like. I, I feel like when I get to the stage of actually writing a permanent note, it feels like I've reached the ocean. And, it, <laughs> and it's so cool. And I, it's actually quite freeing. And you open it up and you start. And the first day we did it, there was a couple, five, six, seven, eight notes in there. And now there's, like, I don't even, can't even count them. Is there a hundred in there? Yeah, we've hit hundred. You know, it's amazing. And... I don't think it'll be difficult to find the notes we need to find because we're following our interests. So stuff will resurface on its own. I, I, in, in my, I, in my, I, I think you're absolutely right. In my opinion, I don't think permanent notes, permanent notes isn't what a Zettelkasten is. The Zettelkasten is the conversation, but conversations are the entire network of permanent notes. And so, you know, there's been a lot of emphasis with getting to that crystallized idea and getting to that permanent thought. But it's really when we're doing the retrieval aspect of it, when we're traversing and going through the Zettelkast and in the notes, that that's all that matters. And it's about easing into that and having always knowing where you are. So I, if anything, I mean, I'm pushing everyone to sort of jump into the water because I want you to understand that permanent notes don't really matter in essence. I mean, they're just there so your notes don't die anymore. Your notes are no longer a graveyard. They're all connected. And every time you add a new permanent note, you're resuscitating your, your dialogue partner. You're keeping it alive. Every time you go traversing, you're keeping it alive because you're, what do you call it? SRS, space repetition. Basically, you're space repetitioning random ideas that are sort of popping out at you. And I think one of the things that I've seen is that, you know, maybe in the moment, it makes sense to you, but what if six months later, you're not thinking, you're not in that state of mind of like, okay, I see these connections. And so it's that, this is why I sort of pull in as many sort of relevant notes as I can. Uh, so, I I, oh, sorry, I, I was just gonna say, I, I think I saw that. Um, I tried, um, someone said earlier about how do you keep track of what you did? And I, I had the bright idea of copying and pasting my notes over to my personal graph. And it's when I saw them on their own, I was like, this makes no sense whatsoever. I've got a bunch of references to stuff that doesn't exist. The conversation in which I created it, that didn't make sense anymore. Um, so there was still value in what came under the permanent note, but the permanent note itself, without that bit of context, was kind of just quite transient, if you like, not very permanent. Yeah. And if anything, if, if I can say anything about that too, is if you're going to take these notes that you're making in, in this shared graph and you bring it over to your personal graph, you have to do your permanent notes again because the permanent notes aren't going to fit. You're not talking to your Zettelkasten. You're talking to the shared Zettelkasten. Everyone's shaking. You're nodding your head. See, I love that. That's, but the thing is like, if you're nodding your head, you need to understand why you're nodding your head. Like you, you get it. You understand the concept. And so I don't have to like, you got it. And so, and next time there's a problem, guess what? Nod your head. You're going to figure it out. Um, then you can also get rid of all the irrelevant, relevant notes. <laughs> exactly. Yes, Rick. Yes, Rick. 
I'm just okay. glad. I'm just glad you're part of the shared graph, and I'm just glad <laughs> that you're adding permanent notes. That just makes my heart melt. I love it. <laughs> hey, uh, I want to say thank you for those of you who went first. Like Yina, I just looked at it and I was like, "Dang, I don't want everyone reading mine." And what if I do it wrong? And then they're all doing it wrong. And so people like you, Simon, and like Bart like honestly Christian, like, Rodrigo yeah, Lico, yeah kudos yeah. to you all seriously because every day I'd look at them and go that took so much nerve to go first but I appreciate it and I know everyone else in the group did because we got to learn off of you and then by day two or three I went oh now I get it and then I was like dang okay now I'm in but it took me like two or three days of of you all going first so thank you um round of applause for all those who went first <laughs> I'd like to say something to, to Yina's point. I, I'm, I'm still a ways behind. I haven't done my first permanent note yet, but the things I was working on today kind of uh, put some perspective to it for me is by the time you're making a permanent note, you've already dealt with the issue at some level, right? You've already made your, your things. If, if you started with a permanent note, you're not coming from a place of authority, right? Your permanent note is an informed opinion, an informed thing. So by the time you've gotten to that place, if even if you feel nervous about it, you could still defend it. You could still defend your point because you have this whole body of, of work that you've made to get there. Now you can change your mind. You know, somebody can say, hey, well, how about this? And, and then you can alter that. But, you know, the permanent note, yeah, it's real scary to publish and put it out there in the world, but it, it's based on something that you've uh, come up with, you know, through your journey to that point. And the language like, doesn't have to be poetic. Could you imagine if we would have yeah. done that on our own though? Like by like what Rick was saying about doing it in a group, like in like three days, I was like, oh dang, now I get it. But if I would have been doing it by myself, it could have been like months and I would have went, oh shit, I wish I would have known that two months ago. So the the learning curve was much shorter in a group. So thank you for that. Like I really that's that's a huge benefit to doing it in a group. And just, the accountability and inspiration. Oh, sorry. Oh, no, I was just going to chime in. It's all about learning by doing because I had a coaching session with Bo and I'm 206 notes into uh, a, a, a Zettel cast that I have to archive and I'm going to start anew. But by doing it wrong, and I know others have had this issue as well, too. Like I put all this legwork and I was really upset about it. But um, now that I know kind of the right way, I also know like what the value is, because if you do something wrong or different, then you realize the value in doing it correct and like all the things that could go wrong by doing it the other way. So I'm super thankful to Bo um, for helping. And yeah, it's great to learn with this group. I'm, I'm just glad. I'm just glad like you're not mad at me because I was coaching. No, because a, a lot of the, the coaching sessions aren't as effective as this group setting. You know, because you have to see, you have to see what clustering looks like. You have to see what, you know, permanent notes look like. And you have to see how retrieval looks like. And it's just too hard to do like a three hour coaching session, like twice to get it. And I just, I'm just grateful that, yeah. Well, I got a question. Um, so I'm looking at our permanent note page and I'm looking at uh, structure. So let's say, Let's say you're, you're working on some kind of project and you're, um, yeah, so you're doing a lot of work and, the, and this idea of structure, you're kind of struggling to define that itself. So you're kind of adding more and more separate threads of thinking that are generated from different authors, but all about how to define structure. So what would be a good way to to structure your permanent notes around one particular idea that you would want to keep renaming with the same thumbnail. Here's my question for you. Is it that you're defining what structure is or are you just having a conversation about structure and with each sort of thread, it's actually just picking it apart and gathering knowledge about it. Mm. Because how, how that, how was, how was structure created? Structure was created because in the Zettelkast and at that point, in time of the Zettelkast and there was no other place where it could fit or they wanted to start a new conversation about structure. And so it's, what happens is the learning process is not the top-down structure of the conversation. The learning process is the adding 
and retrieval of notes that are connected to structure, if that makes sense. It's a different way of looking at it. Is that, is that clearer or do you want me to go a little bit deeper? Um, so it, it's, it's, yeah. not, it's not that, so when you think about these conversations and threads, right? You think about them as a conversation or it, you think about it like a conversation with one of your close friends, you know? It's, it's, it's all the things that sort of pop off in the different areas that gives you a bigger picture, a broader picture. But then it's also, when you go home at night and before you go to bed and you're thinking about these things that you had, you, this conversation that you had with this, this deep conversation that you had with your friend, that's when you're processing it. But you're still engaging with the Zettel, this dialogue partner, but now you're not even in the notes. You're at home about to go to bed, you're thinking about it. Then you wake up and you're thinking about it. That's what we're doing. And then if you need to go back and you go, okay, well, I need to write a thesis on this or a, or a manuscript on this, then you go into your Zettelkasten, you, you retrieve the ideas into another page where you're just gonna go, like, okay, this is cool, this is cool, this is cool, this is cool. And then you solidify what you're going to say with all the notes that you've taken up to that point. And then that's where you present that to the world as like, this is what I think. Is that clear? And so when you want to get to that top down point, when you want to get to that top down point, that only happens after you've done all this work. You don't have like, that's the, that's the power of the idea generating machine. You've already done all the work. Now you just pull it in. And then as you pulled it in, now you're like, okay, I'm going to write. And I have all my resources here. I have all my thoughts here. And now it's go top down, top down. Okay. Well, let's start with structure. This is what I think about structure. And then da, 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 da. And then this is what I think about context of structure da, 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 da. that's the mm -hmm. whole game right there right that's that's the primary endpoint that's what it's all about i have i have to say i'm i'm sympathetic uh to brian's uh concerns i have similar concerns um the, i think the the problems depending on your discipline and what your interests are um you know the there's differences in approach as far as defining terms. I mean, I guess the, at the very basic level, there's a there's still this issue of, you know, taxonomy, and the idea of the hierarchical structure versus uh, like tagging, right? Where you're trying to get away from the. So, Rick, let me just stop you for a second. Is taxonomy a, a top-down structure or a bottom-up structure? It's top-down. It's like. Uh, you know, species and a uh, genus and species and, and that kind of thing. Taxonomic structures are are very much yeah, top down categorization in general, right? Of of types of things. Um, so I mean, Rome. I guess you know the greatest thing about Rome is that you can do both. And I think, for my mind, I have to do both. So when you know when. <sighs> And, 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 and you, yeah, and you're going to find and, and this, this is what I want. I want you to really understand is that when you approach that problem and when you're like, okay, well, I've got the conversation with the Zettelkast and happening. Now I need to have some semblance of top down structure, which you need as well. It's convergence. It's divergence, right? It's divergent. It's conversion, right? And when you need that, you're going to be able to solve that problem. That's outside the scope of what I'm getting at. That's going to be, that's like advanced and then more advanced and more advanced. But what I'm saying is from this foundation, you're going to be able to get to that point. But the first thing is getting the conversation partnered in. First get, right. the, first get the bottom up down. And then once you have that, all you need, like just to clarify it even more, just create a page. Create, See, a, bracket, it, create a page. And then from there, do all your top down structuring there. And it's like, it's there. And it, you can easily do that within Rome. Well, here's, I mean, here's another example. Some, I think is, is intention uh, might be a tag in the permanent notes, um, a category, however you want to index. What, refer to these things as categories, tags. Index, index. It's, it's an entryway. In, okay, every, entry. one of those, every one of those hashtags is an entryway. It's a doorway into your Zettelkasten. 
So, I, for example, I, you know, I've done considerable reading on intentionality, which has absolutely nothing to do with that tag. Nothing. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's a it's a philosophical um, topic about about aboutness, if you will. <laughs> and even if you won't, it's still that's what it's about. Uh, intentionality in terms of. Um, Have you started what, a top level parent block? I'm sorry. Have you start and when you when you were adding a new permanent note, right? Have you yeah. added a new top level parent block with a conversation that you want to have? Well, I mean that, that's one of the reasons why I I found something I uh, that I termed conceptual clarity, you know, because I know that this is going to be an issue for me going forward. Common sense. I mean, there's common usages of terms and then there's, you know, disciplinary or technical uses of, of the same term, you know, and they're not synonyms. They, they're totally different. You know, they're more like homonyms almost, you know, but there's also um, more. There's also very different ways of understanding the same kind of concept. So you may maybe you're working on the idea of something intentionality yeah. and you're comparing various views of what that is. Exactly. Yeah. And, uh, so the question is, how do you. How do you create that conversation where it seems like the, the terminology seems to be overlapping so closely? Right, right. Well, here, here's, here's my question, right? I, 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 what I hear you saying is there's a sense of, you know, the words that we use have to be specifically contained. It's kind of, it's kind of like what I hear you saying. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, that's good the words that you use have to be specifically contained. And... And the only thing that I'm going to say is is that going to be most efficient in a conversation or communication partner? Yeah, if you're talking, let's say you're having, let's say we're, our, our conversation is what is intentionality. And Bo, you have a view and I have a view and Rick has a view. Mm -hmm. Then it's very relevant for sure. And part of the conflict only really exists in a shared graph. In his own graph, it wouldn't, it wouldn't actually exist at all. Because the terms would be used, you know, in accordance with his own framework of thinking. But if I wanted to write about both kinds of intentionality, I'd have to come up with tags that were unique, that were different. You know, like, I, you know, I'm still going to err on the side of what you're trying to do is basically take all the learning that you've done up to this point and fit it into bottom up structure and it doesn't work and what i'm saying is this is this is bottom up it's not top down at all no i want both i want both i, I know but but the thing is I, I think what i'm getting at is it's letting go that all the work that you've done with attempting to do top down is ineffective in a Zettel casting. And yeah, it's, this I was oh sorry, Will. And 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 it's and it's it's really accepting that and letting go of that in order to embrace this way of working. That's the only like I look at it, the people that have embraced this the most have been the people that have no qualms of giving up that sort of certainty of this is how I learn, this is how I build knowledge. And it's contentious, but I, but I, I, I'm disagreeable. It's contentious, but it's also the stronger you hold on to your old ways. It's blocking like, Hey, all you have to do is let go. As soon as you let go, you'll find the answers that you need through this emergent converging technique. And, and you, you have the foundation there that's going to provide the sort of conversation and these alive notes. And then how you output that is completely on you. And how you output that, you can definitely do top down. But it's up to that point is where that's really what it is. It's this idea of letting go. So I was on a coaching session with, with a gentleman. And I, I think everyone should hear this, right? Because there's a lot of ego involved with knowledge and thinking and intelligence. And for me, it's, I've always been smart, but I didn't give a fuck about it, 
right? But I also see that intelligence is something that's very prideful. And it's like, I'm certain about my intelligence and I'm certain about how smart I am and how, I, how articulate I am. And I was having a coaching session with a gentleman and he was crushing fleeting notes, completely understood it. I didn't even have to explain it. He just got it. Literature notes, got it. As soon as we got to permanent notes, he goes, this is wrong. This is wrong. And I go, okay, I'm just gonna, can we just walk through it? You, being informed by the flitter, fleeting and literature notes, can you crystallize this thought? And the, the, the lack of willingness was something akin to, I mean, I used to work in, I used to work at a rehab, right? It was akin to that where it was like, no, but I love this. I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable with this. And the next week we jumped on another uh, coaching session and I, I wasn't, I wasn't angry. No, I had compassion towards him. And it was like he loosened the grip. And as soon as he loosened that grip, he was able to go, whoa, that makes sense. And I told him I was proud of him because that takes a lot of guts. And I'm not saying that's anyone here. I'm just saying that this is a completely different way than a lot of top-down ways of learning. It's actually the opposite. And as we've grown and experienced life and been graded and given scores and given tests on how well we can top-down build knowledge, it's when we're introduced to this bottom-up way of looking at things, it's, yeah, ego death. And it's just, if you're willing to hold on right? And hold on to these questions that you may have and just, just be like the gentleman that on the second coaching session where I was like, he was still holding on and that's fine, you know? Because I don't think you need to let go of that completely. No, it's very powerful. It's very, you know, it's very, you know, what do they say? Once you make your first million and you lose it all, it's like making your second million is easy. It's the same thing. It's like once you've built this knowledge top down and you let go of it, it's easy to build it up bottom up. It's easy. And so all I'm saying is, if you could just hold on, let's see how this can be a new way or a doorway or an entryway or an index into something that's going to be unexpectedly, unexpecting, unexpected, like serendipitous and maybe even life changing, but I, I just have to say, just hold on. And I know you have a lot of questions and I know you have a lot of doubts and concerns, but just hold on, you know? And I think I'm going to, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to jump into the presentation aspect of this and I'm just going to go and share my screen. And I want everyone to know how I came to all the ideas that I came to, because it's, it's important to show you where this is all coming from. And hopefully everyone can see the screen here. I'm gonna go into the image gallery first. And I just wanna talk about some of the ideas that sort of led me to this point, right? And so this is what you would call the physical slip box. And when you think about the sort of, yeah, PTSD, exactly, Justin. When you think about a physical slip box, one of the hardest parts is that when you have them in a physical layout, what you have to do is you have to pick one up. And when you pick up a note, guess what? You can't see the note behind it. Well, you can if you have two hands, but then you, can have, you have two hands and you have two notes in front of you. These are two crystallized thoughts, but then you can't see the third note behind that. And so you have to lay them all out like this. And then you have to also re be able to read what each one of those notes is saying. And then this is the point of the index. The index is the index or the hashtag in the permanent notes in the Zettelkasten is supposed to show you what's behind this physical card right? This is traditionally how you would do that. You know, if this was a note card, you have these little areas where every sort of like lumens sort of cards each had like, okay, the top right corner has a specific piece of information. The top left corner has a specific piece of information. And that's how you connected these ideas. And this is again, 
he had to solve these problems with the physical slip box, these physical index cards. And then basically what you do is when you bring this into the digital realm, you come up with something like this. And it's the same idea. You have the sort of permanent note, you have the reference notes, you have sort of these are hashtags or, or relevant notes or maybe just ways of categorizing things, right? So you can stumble upon it later. And then this right here is a UID, the timestamp. And same thing here, these are UIDs or timestamps. And again, when you look at this though, contextually, you only have one image in front of you. So your entire focus is what? Only on this. You don't see what it's connected to. You have to open up another window to do that. And this photograph here is gonna show you what an index would look like in this physical, physical slip box. So it's like you have this, you have in general, the process. Again, it's the same idea in all these UIDs on the side. These are all your permanent notes. You actually have no idea what's inside of these until you open it up. So contextually, you have to dive into it in order to stumble upon it. And so if you need to do this, there's certain things that you have to do. You have to come up with solutions because you can't see what's inside. And this is just another photograph showing, okay, if this is a physical, if this is a, uh, a digital translation of the physical slip box, you have to link the context using these sort of ways. And then hashtags at the top, UID is the, is the timestamp in, in that date format. And then again, you have one note that's connected to this. And this is the same idea. This is a backlink to this note, but you also have to remember that when you do this, I mean, this is why you're only afforded like one or two in that space of that physical slip box. And, and it's this idea of also, sometimes people make it very complex. And this is just another image of that. It's, can you explain this to somebody? I don't know, I'm reading it, I understand it. So basically this is all the metadata the author, the reference note, basically, these are all the sort of relevant ideas. And then this is going to be linking to other permanent notes. And then you scroll down and you have more stuff. But it's like, if anyone, if you invited anyone into this party, it's like, I'm scared of anyone that has like 500 tabs open. It's the same idea. It's like, it's, I don't know how you can do work in this environment. And then this is going to be what an index traditionally looked like. Right? So you have political theory and then underneath that you have concepts and you have all these different permanent notes that are linked to political theory. But in Rome, you can do that just by creating a page and just bracket, 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 bracket. You don't need to have all this. That's the purpose of an index, by the way. And then you go into applications like, like um, I think this is Obsidian and it's the same idea. It's you look at this and you go, well, how much information? Because really the, the point of a Zettelkasten isn't just to make permanent notes, it's to retrieve this information so you can use it. And I look at this and I go, this is pretty, it looks pretty, but where's my context? Where, do, where does my focus go? And it's like, I have to click on something and open that up and it's gonna put my entire attention into this. And then this is just another example of that. Here, it's the same idea. So here at the top, so see these le letters and numbers here? You have 3A, 3A1, that's the sort of nested sequence or the Fogelzettel. And then each one of these little titles is gonna be the permanent note itself. And then you go down, you go down. But the thing is, if you wanna dive into any of this, you actually have to click on this and then it'll open it all the way up. And this is just gonna be showing you an example of what the Fogelzettel is. This is the nested sequence. And then the timestamp is sort of the UID or the universal ID, right? And so th th all of this information, by the way, is what I had available for me. So this is all the information that I was sort of pulled from. And I was like, this isn't right. And then it got to, okay, well, this is an image of what the nested sequence is supposed to be. And if you think about this and you go, this is what it looks like horizontally, but what happens if we do this vertically? And if you go look at, if you look at it this way, you can see the nested sequence. You can see how, okay, that structure, intention, and then you keep following that thread out. And that's the idea of, and this is his, this is Lumen Zettelkasten, by the way. So it's like some notes only have one 
Some notes have two branches in or two notes in. Some of them are very multi-threaded. And then this is going to be the idea of linking ideas together. And so you have uh, HLS, human learning. I don't know what HLS means, but then you have computing and then you have verification, right? And then it's about if this is a thread of conversation, HLS is a conversation, computing is a different conversation and verification is another, another conversation. It's about how can you connect these threads of conversations that are talking about this. And then this is just an idea about how communications work. You have a chain of command kind of communication. You have a why communication. You have a wheelhouse communi communication. You have a circle communication. And then what we're looking for is this all channel or open network communication. And this is gonna scroll down to, this is basically what an open network diagram would look like. Everything is sort of nodes that's connected by edges and it's an infinite amount of sort of nodes. And if you think about this, this looks just like what uh, uh, the Rome graph database is. It's the connections and linking all that. And as it gets more complex, you have all the different colors and everything like that. And so all of these, all of these ideas is sort of what I was working with when I was thinking about Zettelkasten. I'm gonna go into this as well. Um, this is gonna be an article about Vogelzettel. Vogelzettel is the nested sequence. And I feel like this was super important to, to read about. And this really, this really laid out this foundation of nesting is blind. So that the permanent notes don't actually matter where it lives in the Zettelkast and it's about what it's connected to. And then it's sort of thinking, you know, linearly thinking or, or radial branching, right? But it was really this, so you have this sequence, but it was really this imagery that opened my eyes to what nesting would be like. And if you, if you, if you think about this and if you can connect a branch over here with a branch over here, that's the sort of goal. And that's what the Fogelzettel is. And then I'm just gonna mute cash, I'm sorry. Uh, this is gonna be Daniel Ludeke's work. Daniel Ludeke is probably, um, Daniel Ludeke is, is so uh, Sonke was using Daniel Ludeke's application um, before he jumped over to Rome. And the things that he talks about in this is phenomenal. I mean, I'll, I'll let you go through it. It's like 45 pages, but basically I would, I was looking at this as my reference of how to implement this in Rome. And so all the different ideas that he talks about where he's comparing Evernote and tagging and all of this information, I'm going to let you go through it, but it's really just going down. I'm going to scroll down to the very bottom here. And um, see, I mean, it even shows you not what Lumen did and it's like, it's this, it, it's, it's, hold on, let me, not what Lumen did, let me just find out where it is. It's putting it all together and it's going, it's connecting boundary with structural co coupling. It's connecting contingency with reality, completely different threads of conversation. And then it's like, okay, and it's, and these are sort of the index notes in the register, right? And it's going, well, I, I understand what he's saying, but how can I do this in Rome? And this is where the aha moment started happening. And this is where it was like, I get it. I, I, I think you can do this. I think you can do this. Choo -choo train. I think you can do this, but you can do it better in Rome. And that's sort of Daniel Ludeke's work. And then, um, this was 2015. This is basically Zettelkast and DE. Sasha and Christian got into a huge argument with, uh, Sasha and Christian got in a huge ar argument with Daniel, right? And this was great to see. This happened in 2015. So this was way before uh, Sonke's book came out, right? But it was very exciting to see because it really showed you the struggles of attempting to create a digital Zettelkasten because of the translation errors. And so what, what Christian and Sasha, the ones that run Zettelkast and DE, their idea was this idea of hub or structure notes, right? And you can read up about this as well, but a hub or a structure note, I, um, I, I can find you a picture here, but it's this idea of, you know, it's that top down structure that people, that, that you were just talking about, Rick. It's like, we wanna be able to have it top down and, and a structure note can, can do that, but you can do that just by creating another page and just adding 
adding the zettles in there. And so this was sort of, you know, these were all the building blocks. And then basically this was um, uh, a conference that Songke was talking about where he really goes into detail about the top down structure compared to the bottom up structure. This was a podcast that Songke was on um, where he talks about, um, you don't see any visuals, but if you listen to it, this is how I stumbled upon the three phases with the gas, liquid, and, and solid phase. About halfway through, he talks about these different phases. And I started asking myself a question like, well, trees have, trees have this, when you use the tree analogy, it automatically inherently adds this idea of time. And when he was talking about this, I started asking a different question. What's a better analogy or a metaphor to relate the three phases? And that's where solid liquid gas came in. Came in. This was the first interview with Sonke on the Rome Book Club One. This is an unlisted video that Matt McKinley put up. I would listen to this as well. Basically, all three of these videos, I would go to bed at night listening to this. And I was, I was wrestling with this idea because I knew what my purpose was. My purpose was not to come in and teach Rome Book Club. My purpose was to create an idea generating machine so I can write screenplays. And if you know anything about my conscientiousness or my work ethic, you know that I don't fuck around. And so I made sure that I had all the resources. I wanted to create an idea generating machine in Rome Research, a Zettelkasten in Rome Research. And so this is, that was my driving force. And so these are all of my resources that sort of led up to where we are now. And that's a real gift, Bo. Thank you. You know, and Thank it's you just, that. you know, and it's, it's, I, I wasn't doing this for any of you. I was doing it for me, <laughs> honestly. And I knew what I wanted. I knew why I wanted it. And then once, and then I, and then I got, I had two coachings. I can't post the videos of the coaching session with Sonke because he doesn't want me to upload it, but I had two coaching sessions with Sonke and it was, none of it made sense when I first had those coaching sessions, but then it was like a boomerang. It was like a week later, two weeks later, it was like, boom, oh my God, I get what he's talking about. Project Zettelkasten, boom, clusters. Oh my God, I get what he's saying. And so basically this entire thing has been this idea of, it's not, a, I asked a different question, so I found a different answer. You know, and it's the te te technology that Rome offers allows us to do it. And I'm looking at what we've done so far and we're closing on. I have 150 permanent notes myself. I'd love to see what it looks like at 250 permanent notes, but it's unbreakable. Every, any, anything you can throw at it, all you have to do is create a new page, link over the, the Zettles, and you can go from 250 permanent notes to 10 permanent notes that link back to the main Zettel cast. And so it's, it's literally infinite. Everything's on the block. So it's infinitely expandable. You know, it's not just Rome independent. LogSec can do the exact same thing. Athens is an open source Rome clone that does the exact same thing. It's basically any application that has block level capabilities. That's all this is. And so, you know, and if you read through Sonke's book, he talks about it, but you know, what's interesting is I almost feel like Sonke was sort of bending under pressure because he started going, it's not about, it's not all just about bottom up structure, you know? And it's just, it is really, but he's just sick of explaining to everybody. Like it's difficult to let go of what we have grown to be proud of. And then to go, well, that was fucked. But it's not fucked. It's actually that's that informs you of how to do this bottom up structure even more. You already you've already made your first million dollars. Now it's like, okay, well, you lost it all. Make your second million. It's the same idea. Um, and so that's the presentation. I think I want. Let me just give you a quick overview. I want to finish strong. Right. This next entire week, I want to continue to focus on building out the zettles, right? Building out the permanent notes, see the clustering, allowing you all. I'm just going to go through and do those two hour live sessions, two hour videos where I'm just sort of going through everyone's permanent notes and just sort of, you know, seeing how it all works. And then what I'm thinking is, okay, 
next week traverse, right? Like by that time, it'll have built up to a point where it's like, now you can just dive in and find ideas. And what I'm thinking is maybe just next week, uh, next week, next week's meeting, we just all meet up and, we, and I'm just going to give you a topic and you have 40, you have an hour to write it, right? Yeah. I'm going to give you an hour to go through the Zettelkasten and just write an article or a tweet storm. That's what, that's what solidified it for me. So basically I had worked and I built out all these Zettels, but none of it made any sense until I had to, I was forced to do the threat of Palooza. The moment that I did the threat of Palooza, so basically if you're not familiar, um, after my last coaching session with Sonke, I told him, you know, oh my God, I see the clustering. I see the project notes. I see it all. Right. And then right after I did my Rome tour with Rob Hayesfield, they had this thing called Thread of Palooza in the middle of December. And it was basically a hundred tweet tweet storm. And I had already spent about 15 minutes bringing over all, like all the notes from my Zettelkast to, to have like an outline already. I already had an outline for a hundred tweets, but then I went on Twitter and I was like, fuck it. I'm just going to live stream it. And as I live streamed it, I was like, well, how can I make this most difficult? How can I break it? And I was like, okay, I had an outline. I deleted the entire outline. And from scratch, I did a hundred tweet tweet storm live. Just, and I didn't write a single word. I didn't write a single word. All I used was all the notes that I've already did. And, and I looked back at the entire, like you can look at it. I can, I can post it. You can look back at the hundred tweet tweet storm and it makes sense. You go, wow, I can follow this storyline. But it was after that moment when I was forced to do a retrieval process is when everything clicked and everything solidified. But there's no way that I was going to, I can wait for each and every one of you to build that out on your own. You have to have a Zettelkasten that has 150 notes and we're there. We're nearly there. And then you can start seeing what this is all about. And then once you know what it's all about, then you go, okay, I have reassurance. I can trust in it. Now I can do this. And now I can, I can, I can build out 50 and I can take six months to build out 50. There's no, you know, it's hammock time. You don't, I don't want to force anyone to do anything. You can take two years to make 50 permanent notes, but at least you know what it feels like to retrieve information in a Zettelkasten. And so that's the sort of game plan. And then basically after Saturday, uh, next Sunday's uh, live session, we have another six days, right? And those six days is basically, okay, everything clicked. You had to do the retrieval process. You've added permanent notes. You get the general idea of what this is all about. Now we're just going to spend six days figuring out those three phases, you know, the capture, the, uh, the processing and the retrieval. We're going to look at those three phases. We're going to look at all the daily habits that you've been tracking. And we're just going to go ask yourself the question, okay, right when I, like, when am I going to capture these fleeting notes? When am I going to process these, these fleeting notes into permanent notes? And when am I going to, you know, do this output and just basically figure out everyone's workflow and then probably do a goal setting workshop right at the last two days, because you don't, before you, before you end a goal, you also want to set a new goal, set a new goal before your goal ends. So you don't end up like, Oh, I'm at the top of the mountain. And then you're like, spend two weeks. Like, Oh, what the hell am I doing next? It's like, no, right before you reach that goal, I want to do a goal setting workshop where it's like, what's your, what's your, what do you want? Why do you want it? Set some goals and then put the stakes in the ground six months from now. And then you have that momentum to carry you through. That's the sort of game plan. I'm sweating. Um, and, and then I'm also open to, you know, I don't, you know, there's a part of me that's like, oh, well, we, you know, we can do like a, 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 a we, we should keep this artifact alive. But there's a part of me that's like, no, the purpose of this group Zettelkasten isn't so we can keep this alive. The purpose is so everyone can see what a Zettelkasten at critical mass looks like. And when you don't know where all the notes are, and if you can feel, if you can, if you can crystallize that, like that crystallized for me after doing the Threat of Palooza, then it's like, yeah, you don't, you don't, that's, that's the end of the journey. There's nothing else there. It's like, that's Mount Everest. You have to go to Mars now if you want to find another higher peak. So um, I think we have another 40, 40 minutes here. I mean, I'm just going to open it up. I guess we can dive into technical questions or, you know, anything you're struggling with. And um, yeah. 
some great. Oh, I was going to say, if there's like a short um, one, maybe even doing a live feedback session so people can ask questions during, so it's a car to ask during YouTube videos. I don't know if people would be open to that. Yeah. Well, what do you mean? Well, I, this is what I was also thinking. Was also, I was also thinking just all next week, I was just going to do office hours, right? I'll do it two different time zones. I'll do it like, like one, I would say one at like 9 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and then one at like 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. I don't know. I'll figure out the times. That way it's like everyone across, you know what I mean? Any time zone can just jump in, ask questions, just have it open all week. Uh, it's on the Daily Notes page, Bart. It's under uh, Day 29's Image Gallery or Day 29's Articles. Um, yeah, I mean, that's what, I mean, it's, e it's either that, I think, yeah, you know, that's probably, that's what I'll do. So this week, I'm just going to open up office hours and you can just, I'll have it just open. And if you want to drop in, drop in, ask questions, maybe, you know, we, we can work through sort of, uh, you know, the creation of a permanent note and see, because there's so much, there's an infinite amount of variables when you're making a new permanent note, because it can literally live anywhere and you can literally write anything. And so, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think that's the best way to do it for this week, because this week is all about get your permanent notes in there and then realize that permanent notes don't matter. It's actually the network of the permanent notes that are more important. And then Sunday during live session, we'll do a retrieval process. And then the following week, it's all about workflow and your personalized workflow. And I'll just have it all week. So um, I'll figure out the times, but most likely, um, what if I did like, noon until midnight pacific standard times you know what i mean noon to midnight all day i'll just be i'll just have the computer i mean i'm, I'm at the office anyways but I, we'll figure it out i, I want to make it as accessible for everyone in the rbc as possible but at the same time i don't want to die so maybe i can do it i mean i can do three to three i can i can do min, min, noon to midnight like three days this week hopefully that's enough right but I'll, I'll, how about this? Not to death. Um, I'm pretty resilient. Um, I'm not scared of death. I've already seen hell. Um, how about this? I don't want. I don't know exactly what that looks like right now. But I'll post it in the. How about this? I'll post it for that day. So the 29th, I'll just say hey, say okay. From this time to this time, here's a Zoom room. Jump in. I think that's the best way to do it. It's either that or just have like a calendar where you can just sign up for one-on-one -on -one coaching. But I feel like I'm open to suggestions. I mean, you guys have a better answer. So there's two, um, there's two uh, group calendar scheduling tools. Um, Calendly, I think has the offer of one-to-many sessions that you could try booking. The only thing is that I think you have to pay I think x.ai, which is like another calendar. I like, calendar. I like, I like Calendly. I used Calendly before. I don't mind okay. paying. Yeah, I think Please. one to many might have um, options there. I just, I've never tested it because I'm too cheap to pay. But. Well, do you, think, do you think it's more effective to have it where it's one-on-one -on -one, or is it better to have like group? Uh, for me, selfishly, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I can, I can finish your thoughts, sorry. Uh, I was going to say, I think selfishly, I would prefer group just because I think I like seeing how other people also think. I see everyone's um, in group. Yeah. Yeah, me right. too. Yeah, I agree with, I agree yeah. with Nina as well. I think group would be really good because then there's a lot of people's perspectives and then you might find that, you know, you, someone's problem maybe is also your problem and then it's um, tackled at the same time. Okay. And also just the community is great, you know, you can talk to everyone and yeah. Okay. You so know, group. You, yeah. you know, Bo, when you do a group session, you, you know, at any given moment, if you're having one person basically be the center point that everyone else is then able to view into, you can actually, because you're allowing so many hours, you can easily allow some pretty substantial one-on-one -on -one coaching, but on a group viewable basis. Or you know what this also opens up? You know, what I'm thinking about is it also allows people to teach that's the best way to learn is by teaching others. And so 
so it's like if there's a group right and say like someone is struggling with literature notes and then like someone is like well this is how i do literature notes and then it's like i like that i like that idea. yeah like collaboration yeah yeah and it's having that opportunity to show someone else how to do it too that's powerful okay so i'll do group sessions um and I'll, I'll do open time zones and I'll figure out exactly what it's going to look like. I'm just, I, I can't think exactly what that's going to look like yet. Um, do you still need daily videos and guided writing prompts? I feel like if we just keep building out the Zettelcast, then that's going to be more important than, you know, than that. Cause I'd, I'd really like to see what it would look like, what, what this structure looks like with like 500 notes, you know, because that's, that's, we're edging on, on the, on the, what I, what I've ever experienced. And what happens is now we need to solve that problem of, okay, well now we need to have another page here. That's going to link to these larger branches. I and think like that's definitely going to create a context in which we maximize learning because otherwise we're looking at something that's way down the road, but we get to experience it much earlier manifest problems that you might not even have encountered yet because nope. of the volume. And though we collaboratively solve the problem and great generative ideas that benefit everyone. Yes. And I think that instills that faith in this pro it, it instills faith in a Zettelkasten in Rome too. Cause it's like, Oh, well shit. I already see what it looks like with 500 notes. If you have any time Bo, to do a, uh... I think the videos are always very helpful. Um, I don't think we need writing prompts anymore. Everybody kind of has their own, uh, you know, material that they're going into. Um, but, you know, you got. What kind of videos? Well, I mean, the, the, the videos where you're going through and, uh, you know, saying, you know, just tweaking people's uh, input and, uh. and, you know, and you're dealing with, conceptual issue, issues as well as technical issues and they're informative i i wouldn't say that you have to maybe hit everybody um you know but and and restrict your time i think you're you're maybe putting too much time especially if you're going to do those long office hours if you can do maybe a, i don't know 20 minute half hour video or something just go if, maybe um you know go through a, a few things that would be helpful i don't know what does everybody else think? What, what if we were, what if you were to, and I don't know, this might be too much work, so we don't want to get into the, you know, difficult editing zone, but what if we were to take the various learnings around a given situation and break it up into videos that are titled and therefore easily accessible? I, uh, if I, yeah, I would just say, knowing how much time is involved in editing and uploading videos and how many things can go wrong. You know, I, I think Bo, if you're offering these office hours, I would be completely happy with that and just drop the videos because mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, the, everything's going to be there happening in the office hours already. And I, I really, really don't want you to burn out. Bo. I think it's just incredible what you're offering already. I think I all of us feel so lucky, especially kind of getting, the sense of the depth of work and thinking that's gone into creating all of this structure that we're now just benefiting from. Um, so yeah, at least for me, I, I feel like if I know those, yeah, may, maybe just record the office hours session and upload them if that's not too you're, difficult. You're giving me an idea. So how about this, right? So I have, I have tomorrow's going to be Rome reading room, right? And so that's cool. So what if I do this? I'll do one more Cause I have, cause there's a lot of people that added permanent notes that haven't even touched yet. Right. So I'll do one more scan of that. Right. Just like the last two days where I just go through and just talk as I'm, as I'm reading through everyone's permanent notes and I'll do one more video of that. And then Tuesday I'll open up Tuesday, Tuesday, I'll open up office hours. And yeah. then that way it's like, we're, we're doing both. Sounds great Brilliant. to me. Sounds great. Yeah. Because, because I feel like they're like, I've touched upon just about nearly everything uh, in the last like two days. I know the one video was kind of wonky, but yesterday's video was fantastic. I felt like day 28. I feel like that one had a lot of good context. And even the first one, day 27, maybe. 
but I feel like one more of those videos and then I'll jump into office hours just for everyone just to tweak and like, okay, let's get into making permanent notes and get in that habit. And then Sunday traverse, and then all the next week figuring out output and how to personalize this. So we know exactly if I'm, if I'm reading a book, I know exactly how to get that into Rome. And I know exactly when I'm going to process these notes. I know exactly, you know, when I'm going to go and retrieve or, you know what I mean? Like I want to figure, and because that's, that's going to be more like individual writing though. So I don't know exactly what that looks like yet, but it's like, that's every single one of you is going to have a different workflow. And it's about figuring what that, figuring what that is. So after this, you're ready to go. And then probably that Friday, Saturday, do a goal setting workshop. And then we'll do a debriefing on the Sunday. That's well, the sort of game plan. Uh, Bo, fast question for you, just with regards to office hours. So, so there's a few of us that are kind of um, probably how we learn is by asking kind of questions that may not be totally in line with what you're thinking. And I'm just going to do a shout out to uh, Think Like Taj, uh, who maybe is is too shy to ask or jump in because we're all, all a bunch of us are all rambunctious. But I'm just trying to tee up Think Like Jazz uh, Taj. So get ready. So he or her is asking a great question, and it's it's a procedural question. And I and I I got some of those myself, so maybe the 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 office hours might help us. So this is anyway. I'll shut up. No, no. Is it this one? How do you organize your thoughts? Yeah. How do you organize your thoughts with notes when you have a thought in tree structure, and you always find a link between each thoughts? Do Do you mean well, how I do you? How do you turn that into like a linear output into a text? Is that what you mean? I don't know. Mike, does that, I don't, what do you think? It's, it's not for me. It's from uh, Think Like Taj. I think that person's trying to figure out, trying to make sense of this. I don't have all the answers, dude. <laughs> I can I offer can I offer a real world real example? Yeah. So about ten years ago, we were contracted to do um, an amalgamation of all the healthcare guidelines that were used by hospitals and healthcare facilities in healthcare re regions that then got shrunk down into healthcare authorities. And we couldn't convince the chief nursing officer to not think in this hierarchical way. Like we have these guidelines, we're gonna organize these guidelines. They're gonna look the same as they always have looked, but they're gonna, you know, we're gonna amalgamate from all these different hospitals. We know how they're gonna do it. And we're just gonna make one big document for each, each of these things. And it would have taken years, decades. And so, Finally, when we had like 15,000 documents, she finally capitulated because it's like, 50, yeah, there's no, there's no way I can sort through 15,000 documents to try and, to try and get an, an organized hierarchical structure like everybody would like to have, like these knowledge bases of, of healthcare guidelines. And so what we finally convinced them to do was when you have a topic that you need to talk about or, or, or um, like let's say you're making a guideline for, I don't know, assess, assessing people for, for wheelchairs or something like that. Well then that at that point you go into the 15,000 documents and you retrieve, as you're saying, those that are relevant. And then you make your new guideline, you bring in some extra literature if you need it, you bring in books, you bring in experts, whatever, but you have this targeted specific use of that 15,000 documents. But to try and organize it from the start, it would have been impossible. So I think, I think that's kind of the, the structure we're building on a personal level. Yeah, but you, you could, but you could approach that from a, you could enter into that equation through social justice, the need for, for uh, uh, accessibility uh, friendly design. You could approach it from a engineering perspective for human mobility. You could approach it from a, you know what I mean? Like there's all kinds of ways. So if you had a 15,000 uh, object repository, it'd be, it'd be really tough. But how I'm looking at the permanent notes is that I can kind of, go into it a number and, and that's what I was using as I was putting my my notes in too. What do you think of that? Well each each of the hospitals would have had their own permanent note, right? 
but but the permanent note like you say or not let's let's say it's not a hospital maybe it's a rehab center maybe it's a you know there's other other healthcare modalities uh so yeah the permanent notes might look very different and to try and draw all those things into one use uh yeah i, I appreciate what you're saying though <laughs> can i just say something just to be cheers i'm just looking at everyone it's just like can we just like i mean thank ourselves i mean this is amazing like look at all these people like i know all of you i've read all of you you know and it's like what are we doing you know this is gnarly and it, it's yeah I mean, i think yeah i don't know i'm, so I'm Bo, just, yeah. so Bo, when i'm talking to parents you know who feel like their kids aren't being very grateful i always tell them that it's okay to go like this sometimes when no one else is doing it so if everybody would just go like this good job good job <laughs> Good, good job. job. Good we're job. We're showing up. Good job. You know? um, is there any other, like, I mean, is there anything else to add? I mean, does everyone understand like where, you know, that's, that's, that's the entire sort of history of how this has come into play. And is there, you know, it's. Bo, can I ask a question? Yeah. Um, so my intention is to use my own journals as my references instead of reading more books. I've consumed a lot of data over my years and it's time to start processing my own, my own thoughts from what I've, my own thoughts. So I kind of want to create a Zettel that's based on my own journals so that I can produce work off of it. So I was just wondering how to best move forward because I'm already starting to move move some of my journals into my into my room and wanting to create you know this recreate this method so do you have um any recommendations for any of us who are wanting to do something like that yeah that's a project Zettel casted but it's it's like but you have to get to that point where you understand the entire picture of the capturing process, the, the processing process, and then the retrieval process, like traversing the Zettelkasten. Once you get to that point, then it's like, oh shit, I can do this with anything. You can do it with anything. You can do it with journals. You can do it with, you know, just this one project that you're working on, or say you have a, a say you have a semester in school, right? And then all you want is all the things that you're learning in that semester. And so you create this project Zettelkasten, which is the exact same thing as a regular Zettelkasten but you just have it separated over in another page and it's the exact same process. And so what of, happens for some of us who didn't understand Rome well and just started like hucking it in. And so, you know, I have on, you know, February or I guess June when it opened up last year. So in June, I started just putting notes on the June page and it's literally just one big block with my whole journal notes. And now I need to take those and find them and start processing them. So I'm not quite sure, should we be going back and trying to reformat them or can we find a way to use how we already did it? Like, what did you do when you finally went, oh, now I get how to do this. Like, what did you do with what you had processed before? I didn't process anything before. I just figured out how to do a regular Zettelkasten. And then I was like, I can make a project Zettelkasten with just my own thoughts. And then I would capture the same way I do capturing from uh, my regular Zettelkasten, voice memos, right? And then I did the same thing. And I just, instead of having literature notes, I just have reference, which is links back to the auto recording and then my fleeting notes. But the fleeting notes is important because you have to abstract out on what it, what it means. And then I go, okay, let me crystallize this thought. I'm gonna create a new thought. Okay, this is thinking, this is Zettelkasten, this is writing, right? And that's it. But it's like those questions, like I solved it because I understand what, I got to that point where it was like, oh my God, that's what that means. I, I get what the Zettelkasten is. You're saying you put all those on their own individual page. The permanent notes were separate from the main permanent notes page. So basically I have, so you have a permanent notes, which is the Zettelkasten itself, right? But then I have another whole tagging system that's just called, I call it tweet storms and tweets, right? Let me show you. I think this is, this is important. This, this isn't really technical as much as it is like, oh, this is like the next step. Bo, is this all in a single graph or a different graph? It's all in one graph. And all okay. you need to do is just change, um, you know, let me show you. 
But while that's loading, I mean, one of the things I've been playing with is like thinking about this like an index, instead of thinking about it as an index to a single document, it's an index to your brain and, and all your library. And then in the separate part of Rome that's not within the Zettelkasten is where you can generate more traditional top-down content, right? Like, because yes. I literally did a Zen diagram, Venn diagram, because I was trying to treat Zettelkasten and Rome as if they were completely overlapping. And when I separated them mentally, it helped me a lot. Because there's a lot of space in Rome outside of the Zettelkasten. And that, that what you're saying right there is what everyone's been, what, what a lot of people struggle with is that, oh, they think it's one or it's either black or white. It's like, no, you can do both. And you can do both in Rome pretty well. You know, that's exactly what you said, Roy, is exactly it. But, but I feel like what it is, is it's very top heavy. A lot of people are more used to doing top down structure and are, aren't very familiar with bottom up structure. And so this is why I've been like, you know, but what you said right there is exactly it. Yeah, I appreciate that thought, Roy. And, you know, I mean, that's what I'm after too, is to have the best of both worlds. But I also feel fairly strongly, and this might change down the road, but I, I want my Zettelkasten to serve the other, you know, I'm, I want, you know, I mean, I don't understand why it should be uh, an entirely different entity for a different purpose. Why wouldn't the Zettelkasten serve whatever research uh, project I want to uh, go into? And yeah, I'll create separate pages for those and and so forth, like you say. But well, you know what? I guess unless I'm misunderstanding your 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 point, Bo, about these uh, kind of sometimes tenuous connections with uh, relevant notes. Can I jump in, please? Yes. yes. Um, I want to build my Zephyrcasting, obviously. Now, I've got various different, I'm going to call them roles. Um, I've got different websites and I've got work, and they're all totally disconnected from each other. So I've got like needlework, cooking, um, websites, technical stuff, they're all totally separate and I can't see them overlapping. So would I have separate um, permanent notes pages for each one? Would you, would you want them to overlap? I can't see how talking about gluten-free cooking and embroidery are going to overlap. Well, what if it was, what I mean, my, when you're writing these permanent, thinking. when you're writing these permanent notes, you're doing the so you're reading something about embroidery and yeah. then you're abstracting out and then you get to this crystallized thought yeah what 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 you're taking from someone what the author is saying and you're crystallizing this thought and usually that thought is going to be summarized as one word right and say it's sort of persistence in embroidering or or detail orientation orientation that's not heirloom Huh? Heirloom? Heirloom. heirloom yeah, so, so heirloom, right? And so you have like heirloom, right? And then you, you write a crystallized thought about heirloom, but then, you, but then you have a completely different conversation way down here, and it's talking about tomatoes. And, yeah. you know, and you're talking about tomato water. And then all of a sudden you go, okay, this is uh, uh, this great cookbook about tomato water. And then you go heirloom tomatoes and then you could also use the same index heirloom down here okay. for heirloom tomatoes and then there and then you can connect them as well and it's just interesting to see the connection that you wouldn't be able to think okay yeah i'm with you thank you can i show you something yep i'm gonna show you my zettel my zettel casting well i'll show you my i'm gonna come back to the twitter thing right let me show you my permanent notes so basically if i go to artificial intelligence it's like, like none of these deal with artificial intelligence. They're really talking about story structure, right? So it's so a lot of my, my like 90%, like 75% of my Zettelkasten is all about story. That's all I care about, right? And it's like, what I'm doing is then I get to jump. And at the very bottom, I have Zettelkasten right down here, right? But a lot of these Zettelkasten stuff, guess what? It, it relates to story structure 
you know, and it's just connecting these ideas that are completely far off, like, you know, destiny, vision. And this is talking about Zettelkast and vision. And then for some reason, I have a note from, you know, maps of meaning, you know, talking about striving in life, you know, but it's, it's just more doing shorts, not thinking it through fully. Yeah. And it's just, it's, it's when I, when I go searching for it is when, again, it's different. You have a different hat that you put on when you're retrieving or when you're traversing the Zettelkasten. It's not about creating notes anymore. Now it's going, how can I stumble upon things? And so I'm going to go back to the Twitter page here. So basically this is what happens. This is a project Zettelkasten. A project Zettelkasten is the exact same structure, right? It's the exact same structure, but it's just notes that I wrote to myself. So if I expand it all, I still have the clustering here on the side, but then if I click on any one of these, I only have the reference note, which is the auto recording, and then my abstractions from the fleeting note. And then I add it to the Zettel by shift clicking on Twitter. And then I add it to where it fits. And then I add relevant notes as well. And this, this is completely, the reason that I have different tags though. So if I go to this date, and I love this because it's like, oh, well, what else was I doing that day? It's like, oh, okay. And then if I go to the timestamp, it's like I have different tags. Instead of uh, relevant notes here, I have tweet storm. Instead of, instead of uh, don't worry about purpose right here. But if, instead of uh, permanent notes, it says Twitter. Reference notes and fleeting notes don't matter if they're connected. But just make sure that your permanent note tag and your relevant note tag is different. So it doesn't talk with your Zettelkasten. These are just small little details that that you're going to figure out because you're going to be like, well, why do I have my project Zettelkast and notes in my, in my permanent notes page? Right. And okay. yeah, and that was sort of, that was sort of putting the last two questions together. This is huge. What? What? This is huge. What do you mean? I mean this answers so many questions for me. Yeah, this is really powerful what you're doing, man. You're blowing our minds. Don't get us all excited. And then uh, end wait, wait, hold on, hold on. No, wait a second. I didn't prepare. What are you talking about? I thought this was, wait, explain that to me. Well, Using the different tags for the, you know, the different buttons, as you call them, your, your fancy CSS buttons, using them differently for different purposes, that, that answers so many. Oh, wait, wait, you've never seen this before? No. Or if I have, I don't, I, I didn't maybe at the time pick up on it. Did you go over this with Has Hasefield? Yeah. This okay. Is my, okay. So this is what I'm going to do again. Okay. I'm just going to, I'm going to traverse a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Hey, hey well, I, I, I think, I think it will be more clear for every, everybody. If we work on the retrieval phase, I think, uh, I think the next uh, crisis of faith is how, how we are going to use it. Yeah. Example, how, if I, if I, if I'm going to write an article, how can I navigate into my zero cast and or in our zero cast to retrieve the information? How is the best way to doing this? Next when Sunday. do I choose to yes, write? Buddy. Next yeah, Sunday. Buddy. Great. Next Sunday. Great. Next Sunday. But Next. we need to have enough notes in there where we can traverse without stumbling upon the same notes. Right. And we've got, and I, I know we will, but if we spend all next week, if everyone starts adding permanent notes and getting into that habit, right, letting people catch up as well, and then we can traverse. But let me, we've got probably like seven more minutes here. Can I just give you a little example of what I'm talking about? Please, please. Okay, so say, um, say I want to write a story, okay, and I want to talk, uh, you know, let's talk about relationships. And then what I do is from all the work that I've done, I just click on this. And then I have multiple sort of ideas, each talking about relationships. So I go complexity of relationships. And then with one click, I have all the information there. And this is why it's important to have the fleeting literature and permanent notes. And obviously this is something from way before. I didn't have the reference note there. I had it on the top level. It's refining. And then this is the crazy part. Okay. Say I go down to connectedness. Right. And I'm going, oh, this is cool. What happens if I open this in the and I go engagement? How does that connect? And I open this in the sidebar. Right. And I'm like, OK, this is cool. But then I can still click for references here. And so I'm going to widen this just a little bit so you can see it. I'm going to do that one more time. Come on. A little bit more. Sorry, guys. 
I'm on widescreen. Okay, this should work. And so now I can traverse on this note. I can traverse on this note. I can go down. I have all my information here, my reference note, my fleeting note, and my literature notes. And if there's no colors, it doesn't take away. And then I can click on the permanent note itself, and it'll take me to the permanent note. It'll take me to the day it was created. And it shows me the location in the permanent notes. But here's the crazy part. I can also click on the link references here. And so it doesn't matter where I am, I can st still see all of the notes that are connected. And I go, selfishness, how does this connect it with? And I started with re relationships, I think, but then it's like, I'm going down this and it's like, okay, here's more relationships. And then I go, okay, what does artificial intelligence have to do with this? And I jump to that block. And then basically I have all the notes that are connected to artificial intelligence, but then I also have it here, you know? And it's like, what if I go to granularity? And then I go, I have all my references here with one click. And then I can jump back over here and I go destiny. And then I go, okay, this is cool, but let's go down, let's go down, let's go down. What is, uh, let's go down, let's go to emotional pool. And I see all the link references for emotional pool. And then I go realization. And so it's basically, you always wanna know where you are in your Zettelkast. And especially when you get to that point where you don't know where you are anymore. And so how things are structured in this simple way shows you the nested sequence with one click. So Bo, yes. um, um, and I know you're saying wait till next Sunday. I'm just gonna tell, I'm not speaking for Rodrigo, but I think he's maybe in the same zone as me. This is awesome, but I'm, I'm, I'm going along going, okay, but how do I build my outline from this? Like I'm, I'm traversing and seeing all this information, starting to see a, a theme going, okay, I'm gonna write a paper about this, what, I, what you just showed us could easily, no problem, be, a, be a, a few pages of a paper or an article. And now I'm thinking, okay, I want to build a, an outline. You don't have to show us, because I know you said next Sunday, but I'm just asking for Rodrigo. But let's, let's, say, let's say I want to talk about character, right? Yeah. So yeah. I'm just going to write this. I'm just going to go in here. I'm just going to write character. Uh-oh. The computer's breaking down, I feel like. Come on, daddy. Can you see it? Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm uh, breaking up stop again. sharing real quick. I feel like Rome is lagging a little bit. Hold on. So basically what I do is I just create a page in the sidebar. And then I basically just drag over all the notes that are relevant. But the thing is, it's like, oh, you have to watch. You know, like I did this with the Rob Hayesfield. I did this with Rob Hayesfield. And it's just like, it's basically, hopefully you can see this, right? And it's going here and I just go outline, right? Yeah, I'll post it. And then I, okay. and this is where I start to start, right? I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to look for. I'm just going to travel and my, this Rome is acting funky. Michael, I think I'm just going to kind of talk out a turn here because Please. I'm kind of, I'm just sort of going to guess out loud about what, what is actually happening. But so um, those, you're pulling in relevant notes and they're relevant for a reason because you saw that connection when you made the notes. And so the logical structure of your outline is going to kind of make, it's just going to happen naturally because you're traversing through your permanent notes in a way where the connections were put in place because that's how you put it together. And so that part of it is, seems to me like it's going to get just be really easy, almost effortless, sort of like the way it was for us to crystallize our thoughts when we built everything up from the fleeting notes and everything that just kind of happened yeah, really quite organically. And it seems like Bo is doing that now. He's like, well, I don't even really need to try to but, think about how these are connected because they're already connected. That's what makes the thing. That's what makes it all. <clears throat> yeah. That's well, how we built it. In the conversation analogy, the Zettelkasten is a conversation with yourself and with the other people you're reading. But Michael, what you're talking about is, OK, now I'm going to have a conversation with the public. And I got to translate what makes sense in the conversation I've been having over here yeah. to some people who haven't been part of that conversation. So I'm going to restructure this sequentially in a way that makes more sense in a conversation with the public or an external audience. It, it's, but, but, but you can, many of the same thoughts will apply. They just might be structured different or, or have some different connective tissue. And, I don't know if that's one, how I'm thinking about it. And one, and so just you know, when Carol Leather asked the question or made the comment, what is what is gluten-free cooking and 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 crochet have in common? They might have a whole bunch in common. And so by by pre-separating things in different graphs and stuff, I think you miss out on the uh, the, the happy coincidences and, and stuff. Just to pick up on that one example. 
Also, metaphors are very, um, very important teaching, very effective teaching tools. So if you were talking to somebody and you're trying to explain a concept to them and you're familiar with like gluten-free cooking and crocheting, you might be able to explain a concept to somebody using a different concept by using a, mon a metaphor, um, sorry, say the same concept using a different metaphor that, that relates to them. So okay. they do actually connect at the base level, if many things do. Yeah, thank you, I like that. Oh, I had two questions for you quickly too. Um, one was how many permanent notes do you have in your own personal? And About then one, ever since one, you started- 45. Okay, ever since you hit, I don't know if it's, if you hit the critical mass or like ever since you started using the system, how has it changed you? Because I just see how, I feel like it's like such a huge unlock. I just be curious about your personal experience and like how that's changed you overall. It's, it's, it's relieving. It's probably that's, that's the biggest thing It's relieving, but also I'm learning in a way that like school never worked for me. Right. You can never sit me down and says, you have to read this. It's like, no, but it's like, I'm learning and it's relieving because every time I add a new note to the Zettelkasten, I'm looking back at all the notes that I've already written, but because I think it was Alan was talking about like, well, this, and it's like, I'm thinking about the notes that I've already written, or I, I think it was Rodrigo that was talking about like, well, what if I have two different permanent notes? I'm thinking about the notes that I've already written as I'm going through my day, if that makes sense. And so it's just this, it's this like virtuous cycle. And, you know, what has it changed? It changed how I look at storytelling because everyone's trying to do top down with storytelling. And I'm like, no, but that's not how it goes. It's actually... You're not looking for character and plot line and three act structure. It's the theme that matters first. And if I can figure out the theme, then I can layer everything on top. And it was just like, I had this aha moment. I think it was after one of these coaching sessions, I was coming out of the shower and I was like, oh my God, I got a fucking story idea, you know, but it was because of all the work that I've been doing. And it's just like, that's priceless. And it's also the fact that I don't have to remember it. It's all in there. And what I wanted to show you was the fact that, yes, I can, when I'm, when I'm doing an outline here, by the way, I'm pulling in my permanent notes, but I'm also pulling in my fleeting notes. I'm also pulling in my abstractions for my literature notes. And I'm also pulling in this aha moment to right here. And so when I'm doing my outline, it's like, None of your, any of your abstractions that you've done, this is why I was like so like repetitive in saying like, no, write it all out because this is now gonna be useful when you need to do an outline. When you need to do an output, you can pull from everything, if that makes sense. And that was, what, that was the sort of like aha moment. That was the sort of crystallization of all of this is like, whoa, that means, None of the work that I do is no longer dead. And that means, you know, all the fleeting notes, all the literature notes, all the permanent notes shows me contextually how I got to that idea. But then I can also pull in, like, this is why I didn't have to write anything when I did a hundred tweet tweet storm. And I hope that makes sense. And when you've got, when you've got those literature notes in there, when you've got that ability to, to pull that information, like what you were just showing us is brilliant. And, and all along the way, you don't have to worry about plagiarism because if you followed the method from the very beginning of capturing your notes of, of going through the fleeting notes and, and if you stick to the process, you don't have to worry about plagiarism and, and plagiarism is a big fucking deal. It's a major time waster when you get a paper that you've been cutting and pasting because you're in a rush and then you get a paper near the finish line and all of a sudden you go shit. I forgot where I got these sources from and you can try and reverse engineer it through Grammarly, but it's tough this this way it's done this is what this is why sonke wrote a book in 2017 by the way he didn't he didn't he didn't write the book to get famous no he wrote he wrote a book because he wanted his students to have a way to take notes better and so he translated all of lumen's text you know and and honestly that's what he did that's why he wanted to do it hey my, i had i hate to say it michael but uh i believe that that bo han holds the copyright to fucking to the word. <laughs> oh, dude, I'll, I'll write him a check. I'll write him a check. I, 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 if, you, 
I don't. I want to know what what was the watershed moment for both of you two? Because I, I I figured that was already known that like you know to output. I don't know what it was, but you guys are both like because you know why you just get so bloody busy and you just you see something and you just you don't have a uniform way of doing it. All of a sudden, like I've got this mountain of shit to read. But all of a sudden, I'm at peace with it. I can't wait to build my own personal Zettelkasten. If I can do three notes a day, holy shit. But now that I've got a uniform structured way of going, because this 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 week in doing the 12 permanent notes, it was, uh, fuck, man, this is awesome. Like, this is so, like, the, the leveraging ability or whatever you want to call it, ah, it's, it's so powerful. So, yeah, when I saw, and when I saw the permanent notes and saw the threads, it was like, that's why I tweeted you, uh, uh, DM'd you there going, holy cow. Bo, one question on those uh, on those distinct labels that you have for like your Twitter storms and then your uh, your acting or, or um, uh, screenwriting uh, yeah. settle. Is there ever any crossover with with notes there, or are they com they always remain completely distinct? So, so again, uh, so basically, I have my permanent notes, right? My settle casting, yeah, is basically every every like this is screenwriting at the top it's story in the middle it's zettel casting near the end it's talking about character work near that i have artificial intelligence i have women like this is this is my zettel casting and so but everything in here has a reference it has a source material it has a book a lecture a youtube clip or i can point back to where this idea came from from another source right okay. The project Zettelkasten is something where I, I the project Zettelkasten does not have those. And so okay. these notes are completely separated. And the reason that I separated it is because I don't want to dilute the, the, the dialogue partner that I have. These don't have references. These don't have evidence behind it. This is just my thoughts. Uh, okay. Uh, thanks for clearing that, Ashley. That helps. That's helpful. And, yeah. and, and basically the project, and, and then also someone was asking about like, what if I have ideas that aren't fully fleshed out yet? You can also just create a place or a page where you can have those ideas that you're not ready to work with yet, but you want to touch, a, put, touch upon them again, but you're just not ready to work with yet. And then also, I also want to mention this as well. So the reason that I have this captured page is because I have all of my captured things here ready to go when I'm ready to work on it, right? But if I look at say this one, this gets too overwhelming. And so I look at this and I go, I don't want to look at this. I don't want to process any of this. And this is why I was saying only get 12 in there. And so oh, it's about figuring out what that number is for you. So you don't become overwhelmed because this looks so much easier to work with this. So th basically what I do is I basically shift click on this into the sidebar. I go into my daily notes page and I just go, you know what? I'm ready to work. And then I just go, I'm just going to drag this over. I'm just going to drag up the whole, I'm just going to drag the entire thing over. It's gone from here. Right. And I'm just ready to work. I can close the sidebar and I'm ready to work. I have my reference material ready. I have my fleeting notes ready. I'm good to go. If that makes sense. And this is why it doesn't matter when you capture the fleeting note. All that matters is when you're ready to work, it's ready to go. Uh, small question here. When you capture the, the information, do you, capture it into the daily notes page and reference the captured page or no, or tag no, no. It with that? Bas no, I haven't. I have this page here. So I called it, I called it captured YouTube. By the way, this is a namespace. I think someone was asking about namespaces. I just yeah. have it there. So it's because I have three different captured pages. Um, this is, this is my page where all of my captured fleeting notes live. Okay. Right. But it's not on the day. And then basically what I do is I shift click this into the sidebar. And then mm -hmm. I go to the daily notes page. And when mm -hmm. I'm ready to work, it's like, it's like Lumen. It's like, I don't, sometimes I just want to capture for a month. Like I went on this crazy road trip across the country. All I did was capture. I didn't have time to process, but I made sure that I captured enough. So when I did go back, it would be ready to process. And so when I'm ready to go, then I drag, then I just go into my daily notes page. I do the time and I drag the entire block over. Like, look, I'm at five right here, right? Now I'm at four. I see. Right? And then, because this, it's only when I start processing, it doesn't matter. All of this is basically, it's not kinetic. And it's like, what do you call it? The energy that's not moving, that's contained or, I don't know. 
John, you mind if I follow up on? Yeah. You mind if I follow up on that? Um, <laughs> this is something I've been struggling with. So, okay, so if I were to implement this, what I would do, and I, I want you to tell me whether it doesn't matter or if there's a reason why I should switch to this. If I capture something from YouTube, I would put it into the daily notes page, tag it with captured. Then I would go to the capture page and it would live there as a linked reference. Then whenever I'm ready to work on it, I would pull it out of the, out of the linked references from the bottom back into the daily notes page to then do some work. It's sort of a roundabout way, but it seems like what you're doing is you open up the captured page and then put the information onto that page to capture it, which seems like it's just, it's a little faster. It's just a little easier. Is there any reason to initially put it into the daily notes page and tag it? I like no? having the daily notes page as clean as possible. Yeah. Okay. You know, just yeah, because it gets cluttered. Like, here's the thing. It's like, I've never seen anyone with a very clean daily notes page. Why is that? Because it's, no. it always gets cluttered. And it's like link references. No one, I've never seen even Rob Hayesfield. I love him to death, but who really understands the queries that he's doing, right? You know, it's <laughs> like, and then like, I, you know, and then it's every word, every word is, is double bracketed. I'm like, how, how, like how, if you are gonna leave this as an artifact for, for your children when you're dead, like they have to understand what the hell they're doing. You know what I mean? Oh my God. Bo, I'm so glad you said that because I see his stuff on Twitter and it just drives me nuts. I'm nah. like, I have a degree in, in mathematics and I'm kind of like, geez, I can't follow any of this. <laughs> you know what he said? Messy. You know what he said offline? He said, he, we were talking about Nat Eliasson, right? I should probably cut this recording off. We're talking about Nat Eliasson, but we're talking about how because this Rome cult is such a small community and we all, you know, feed off each other. If one person gets it wrong, everyone gets it wrong, you know? And this is why I've been adamant about people misusing the words Zettelkasten and permanent notes and all this, because there's a lot of wishy-washy permanent note Zettelkasten ideas by people that haven't actually done any of the work. And I'm like, no, but if you know what it feels like, you guys are all on the precipice of what it feels like, or if you've already, you've already experienced like relief and and confidence that and you know what i mean like oh finally there's a way to do all this you know and it's like once you get to that point it's like i don't want anyone to to to, to i don't want anyone's that i don't want that joy to be taken away from anybody because they heard from somewhere that this is how you're supposed to mishmash and i zettel casting together i'm yeah, like I no look at all the look at what a zettel casting is and I hope that makes sense. I hope that came off right. I just want to okay. add on to Brian's, Brian's thought for one second. So I spend all my time in my daily notes each day for work. But what I do is at the parent level, I have, I start off like I'm in, I'm in probably 30 committee meetings a week. So I've now got, you know, uh, double, double square brackets. I put in the name of the committee, boom. So that's, that's now linked. So I, what I'm finding, is, and then I put in stuff like fleeting notes tags. So I'm doing what Brian's talking about, but I keep my daily notes page really clean by, by doing the nested uh, indents and all that type of stuff. But the linking is already driving huge value for me because I can go to a project page or to a person. Let's say I'm meeting with Brian or Rigo every, every twice a week, Brian and I meet for, for a couple different things. I've got like a Brian or Rigo or a Rigo comma Brian uh, link and, and, it just, it makes my life so easy for retrieving and dealing. And once you understand this, I'm just going to show you my, my quarterly goals. It's like, once you understand it, then it's like, basically you have, it's the same idea. You just go back to the date, you block reference this, and it's inside the link references. If that makes sense. It's the same idea. The same idea of creating this structure in a Zettelkasten is the exact same idea that you can do for quarterly goals, right? You can also do, you know what I mean? It's like it, let me expand it all. Okay. It's the exact same idea. You know what I mean? It's like you click on this and I have all the different days or if I click on this, it has everything here. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? It's the same idea of, okay, well I can just, it's once you have a handle of what this all means, then basically you can apply the block referencing at the block level 
to any of the things that you're doing, whether it's a project that'll cast in or whether you're doing, um, uh, uh, you know, quarterly goals or whether you're doing like meetings. I think there's a guy, I think his name's Thomas Kuro gets the idea where it's like, no, well, you can just have within one block, you can have so much information. And if you just block reference everything on the inside as a linked reference, which Rome does very well, then it's like, you can collapse everything. And it's like, oh, okay, look, these are all my different meetings here. Look at that. And you get a DEXA scan, by the way. Come on, five pounds of muscle. I'm hitting it. Um, but I hope that makes sense. So I have a follow-up question too, but this is probably good for the last last day of the event, but it's more like after this collective intelligence, what's next? Both I think for the Rome team and just for like all of us have attended. Um, I look at it like the the end goal for me has always been to get everyone here to that point where they never have to ask anyone else for the answers again. It's like, especially with their knowledge building. And so you know how to do it in Rome. You know how to, you already have a plan of how to implement this. You've already seen, you've already seen the finish line now. You know, the finish line is this critical mass of permanent nodes. And it's a very simple lightweight structure. So it's like, you already have all the motivation to do it now. You know, now, now it's like, yeah, I mean, what's a good analogy? Um, it's like you're, you're, you're writing a mystery, right? And you're going to write the end first. So you have to see what the end is before you can fill out all the other details. And it's like, I wanted to get to everyone to that point where it's like, you can see the end and you can feel what the end feels like. So then it's like, oh, well, I want that. And then as for, yeah, and as for this book club, I mean, I don't, I, I looked at it like, I think we all needed each other to push each other to get to that point, especially like when we got to those, you know, the photos, when we got to the permanent notes, you know what I mean? When we're, when we're, when we're going to the retrieval aspect, even like these office hours, I feel like you needed this group to push you past what, what would have been difficult on a one-on-one -on -one session. And so now it's like, not only have we built friendships, now, you know, you can also reach out to people in this community. Hey, can you be my accountability partner until I reach 50 notes? You know what I mean? I'm sure everyone's built up enough of those relationships. And it's like, and if you haven't, you can always reach out to me, but it's like, that's, this is all like preparation. So you can go off and do you like, and it's not, you know, I don't want, I don't want to, I don't want to see you again. I don't want to teach this to you again. I'm kidding. I, I love you guys, but do you know what I mean? Like, I don't want, I don't want it to be like, Bo, can you, can you help me figure this out? Like, no, you should already know it. You get it. You, if I did it, if I did my job well, like the only thing I want to hear from you is like, oh my God, how do I get my mom to start doing this? You know, how do I, how do I get my brother to start using this? And we're way past time. And I am, yeah. So tomorrow, so, so basically, I'm just going to run over the game plan one more time, okay? Um, tomorrow, Rome reading room. Tomorrow, I'm going to go through all the permanent notes that I haven't gone through yet, just the same that I've done over the last two or three days. I'm just going to overview and just record all that. And then starting Tuesday, I'm going to have open office hours, and um, I'll just have a Zoom link in the daily notes page of the shared graph, and then... I don't know exactly if I'm going to do that or if I'm going to do Calendly, but I'm going to make sure that I can hit all the time zones and, you know, come in with your questions and we'll just figure things out as a group. I think that's going to be the best way to do it. And then next week, we're going to do a project where we're going to start traversing. And I challenge you to start traversing now. You know what I mean? See, you know what I mean? Well, it's a little bit difficult because you need like an outcome. You need to have like the pressure of like, okay, you've got 45 minutes to figure, you know, to write a document or something. And then as you go through, um, and then all of next week is just going to be output, output, or all of next week is just going to be personalized workflow, personalized workflow. How can I, how can I know exactly where everything that I'm capturing is going to live? What time of day am I going to process these notes? How, you know, where is this all going to live? And then that Friday, Saturday, do goal setting workshop and then shebang, we're done. Then I never want to hear from you again. <laughs> I just want to hear like, oh my God, I love it. I love it. <laughs> I can see my thinking. And um, yeah, I feel like, I feel like you're coming around to why I'm so excited about this. 
you know, because it's kind of crazy. And I don't think I don't think it could have happened without the block level granularity. It's the difference. Because all the physical limitations of the phys analog slip box look through the videos look through the resources again it's like all the limitations happened because it was all pages everything was in a folder everything was in a folder you had this index card in front of you you couldn't change and see what was behind it now it's like not only do you see everything behind it you see all the linked ideas all the connected thoughts that are behind it and with one click you have all the information of how you got to that thought that's the magic um I love you guys. I will, I need to, I need to go through the, I need to make a video today and um, I can't hear you. Can you hear me? Thank you so much, Bo. Yes. Thanks, Bo. That was great. Yes. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, thank so, you much. so much. Yes. Thank, thank you. you all. Thanks, thank you all for doing the work. Thank you so much, Bo. Trying, trying. Okay. <laughs> I will see you all. Thank you. I'll post this on YouTube. I'll post this on the share graph. Okay. Thank you, Bo. Okay. Thanks, Thanks, guys. Everyone. Take care, everyone. Bye. Bye, Bye Thank everyone. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye, guys. Thanks, Bo. I'm leaving. I'm done. I'm tired. I love you, Matt. See you, guys. Okay.